welcome to Spelunkers, a place for exploring video games and nerd balls. culture. This is the ball show where we talk about balls. Uh, this is the game exploration show where we break games in digestible chunks, but that's not actually true. We're not doing that. We're talking about our games of the year. Uh, this is a special edition podcast. Last week, if you're following the podcast feed, we talked about our music of the year. Uh, very Modi. good episode. Modi, that's right. Tom got it in. Modi. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you should give that a listen. A uh, very good episode. We highlight a lot of games that we probably won't highlight here because they were kind of mediocre, but with great music. Uh, that's a great place to highlight those. But this week, we're here to highlight the best of the best. Uh, I'm Chris. I'm joined by Tyler. Hi. By Ryan. Good evening, everybody. Master Roshi's here. You can't fucking escape me. I may have been missing, but I'm here now. Yeah, <laughs> we're very glad you're back, Tom, uh, for this recording. Preston. Hello. What's up? He's man? got balls. Look. Classic ball shit. I have some too. Just like let me way. stand up. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're not uh, child friendly. It's fine. <laughs> no, that's true. Uh, don't prove it. Just put a little blurring. You could probably borrow some from Ryan's background. It's okay. <laughs> in my background here. No, this is reminding me of Tyler's prom night right now. So. <laughs> All this balls talk. <laughs> and the one Give with balls air, is Victorian buddy. Genetics. We're also joined by. <laughs> Hello. The only one here with balls, I might add. Uh, we are here to each list our top 10 games of the year, do some honorable mentions at the end. Uh, if you weren't on last year's episode, which I guess is just Preston, uh, the way we're going to do it is we'll run around the horn, uh, say you're number 10, then the next person, number 10, next person, number 10. When somebody says a game, if it's on your list, talk about it then, even if it's your number one and they said it's their number 10. Talk about it with all your passion and everything then so that we're not retreading ground over and over again. Uh, otherwise, we're just uh, we're going around the horn and it'll go genetics, Preston, Tom, Ryan, Tyler, myself, just because that's the order the cameras are in. Uh, on your screen? <laughs> yeah, on my no, screen. On, on my screen. The viewer screen. <laughs> yeah. Who's hosting? He'll move us along. <laughs> as long as you say my name when it's my turn to talk, I'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah I will do exactly. that. All right. Okay. Uh, with that, I mean, unless anybody else has something to, to intro with here, something we need to get out of the way, something we need to have mercy on. Harrison our colored my well, picture right where here. Is, <laughs> where is Christmas? Among Us Christmas. Everyone else's? Um, is that where are we all starting? Number one is Chris Tales. Is that where the. I think it's buried now? under the yes. outhouse in my backyard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate. Uh, if, if that game was on anyone's list, I would be. Shook. I have you know a. What? I think I need to update my list right now. Yeah, <laughs> I have a dishonorable mentions category that that is in. Uh, Ooh, <laughs> Bio Mutant. Mm. It was okay, but it's definitely not. <laughs> I got that for like four dollars because of a glitch on the EA store, and I still didn't play it. So <laughs> I like it well enough. It's just definitely not what it was hyped up to be. But anyway, am I And first? with that, yes, let's get started with your number 10 <laughs> okay. genetics, Biomutant. Let's go. Um, I mean, my number 10, I kind of just started playing like a few days ago because of the holiday event, but I did play the betas and it's Halo Infinite. Uh, I just, I started playing in the betas and got hooked on the betas because it feels like playing in high school, my computer class feels like traditional as heck Halo with like the cool shit from like apex legends and stuff that you enjoy as far as mobility goes and so it just feels good but i haven't even touched campaign yet i don't even know if i will if i do it'll Ooh. be once it's co-op pretty much you know what i played on my computer in high school doom 2 oh, yeah. <laughs> so i'm old we get it, Tom, you're old yeah <laughs> Well, there was like a whole semester for my web design <laughs> class where like my teacher went to do a separate business venture or something. And so we got a permanent substitute for the semester. He didn't have us do jack crap. We, we would just come no, into you the can, class. You can say shit. And it would be, jack shit, please. Oh, okay. Jack <laughs> shit. <laughs> and it would just be the whole class either texting on their phones or like all the guys were pretty much in a big ass Halo lobby just playing that. So. Oh. Hell yeah. Oh, I thought that was my Tyler was so pissed <laughs> off that he turned yellow. Yeah, I thought it was mine for a second because I was in the corner and then ours swapped. Yeah, it, I it does that. Swapped for you too. It does. Re what's really funny is I hope that really just fucks it up in the video one. It, else and just... it does. Suddenly, <laughs> Genetics was the second to last person in the queue, but it doesn't matter. But, uh, it's all good. And now uh, it's back, right? I now don't have much to say fine. about 
Halo Infinite besides that. Like they at least they seem like they're listening and patching stuff as they need to, like the daily experience stuff and everything. But it's number 10. It's just basic. It's similar to Fall Guys last year when I put that at number 10. It's like, oh, Fall Guys. It's super fun. It's Halo. There's not much to it besides that. Yeah, I love the multiplayer. Uh, I yeah. actively dislike the campaign, is why it's not on my top 10 personally, but uh, wow. I like the multiplayer a lot. Uh, it's the best feeling shooting game I've played all year. It's amazing. I like that game a lot. Also not on my list, um, just because wow. I, I have bad taste in games. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's been one of the most fun games I've played this year as far as multiplayer games go. Um, that and Fortnite have been my go-tos. There's nothing better than playing a quick match a Slayer or Capture the Flag or something. The shooting feels good. The movement feels good. The game is fucking incredible. I can't wait to see right. where it goes. And it's free to yeah. play. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah, Halo's yeah, been a lot too. of fun. Uh, but didn't make my list either. Uh, it's it is <laughs> number a... three on my list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shit. Uh, and but specifically for the open world. So while like the multiplayer, whenever we all got together and it was like a ten person, we were playing big battle that one night. That was some of the most mul- uh, most fun multiplayer that I've played in a long time. Uh, besides Valorant, uh, which I'll get to in a minute. <laughs> but uh, it was just a ton of fun. But then the campaign came out, and that open world map is just so much fun to explore. The campaign itself is weak, but the map and running around and collecting just whatever in the open world is always rewarding and always fun. Not just for it's not rewarding just for what you get but it's rewarding in the gameplay itself. Like it, it's fun to go through that loop and you can tackle it in a whole bunch of different ways um, in a way that's just a good, good ass time. Like it, it, that's all it is. And while there are a bunch of shortcomings, it would have been number one on my list had the campaign just been a little bit stronger, uh, but the story, it just isn't that great. And so, and like the actual campaign missions are really linear in a way that kind of detracts from this feeling of openness and excitement and adventure that you get from the open world uh, or else it would have been much uh, it probably would have been number one but yeah I, the multiplayer is just kind of the cherry on top of that great open world for me rather than like right. the the core draw yeah yeah this is the first Halo game that i've like played seriously i'm like level 50 or something on the battle pass right now because i've been playing oh, just wow. a ridiculous amount it's it's really I really can- good <laughs> I cashed in a bunch of my Microsoft points that I focus on earning all the time to buy the battle pass and the 25 oh, really? levels. So yeah. That's wow. a smart idea. Yeah, it's a pretty good I deal. do I do it like on cooldown. I'm at like a 45 week streak. Every 10 <laughs> weeks you get 2500 <laughs> points and then like the game pass you can earn a thousand if you focus on that. And then every month there's a 2000 point thing that you just do a few tasks in. So I just spent that to get my battle passes and my game passes and shit for free. He's basically. gaming the system. Exactly. I mean, I partially coupon have to cutter. my girlfriend. She like my girlfriend like coupons and does all sorts of <laughs> deal hunting and all sorts of stuff <laughs> like that. So it's like extreme couponers Xbox like, edition. <laughs> basically, exactly that. So, but I got hooked on it the day I played it, and I wanted to play for the the holiday stuff because I was like, that peppermint armor looks pretty cool. It's good. Yeah, and so I was like, okay, whatever. And then I played like a match or two. And even from the beta, I was like, okay, I'm sold, whatever. I'll spend the points to get the battle pass right now. So. Nice. Hell yeah. All right, Preston, you're number 10. So I alluded to it earlier. It uh, was a last minute change in addition because new content came out this year. So I'm going to call it uh, Valorant for sure. Uh, I It would be way higher on my list if I wasn't trying to abide a little bit closer to the rules of this kind of list. Yeah. There are no rules. <laughs> we, we don't have rules here. I mean, they I like think to say there's rules, rules but I don't fucking listen. That were like all games that came out not in 2020 for some of the writing yeah. lists last year. So it, and Valorant has been something that I have sunk the most time into this year by far in terms of starting at 8 p.m. and not stopping until 3 a.m. or whatever where it's just this constant every night play. And I haven't gotten to play it nearly as much since we moved 
but it is just so constantly rewarding whenever you get in there with a good group and like the real tactical movement tactical shooting uh always makes you feel like you're progressing as you learn the maps and it's not so so intimidating that you can't jump in and learn it as long as you have people that can actually like sherpa you through it uh but uh, it's just so good. It's so much fun, and you can lose so much time to play it, it still. And like I've been meaning to. I'm uh, I'm like obsessed with League of Legends as a whole. There's a game mm-hmm. that will pop up later on the list as far as that goes. Mm-hmm. But like, so I trust Riot and like almost every product they've released so far, including their music and videos and all sorts of stuff. Like, yeah. it's been super good. So like, I want to get into it, but it's been like. It's on the back burner. I haven't yet. I want to, though. Everybody seems obsessed with it. It's so good. And whenever they just did like their championship for the year, and I don't really watch esports or participate in esports in any way, but for this one, I just sunk the entire weekend of watching. Yeah. You know, eight <laughs> hours at a time. Of, I mean, it was yeah. actually two weeks long. And so I would just be sitting there at work, like staring at my TV screen because I. Uh, right. And watching nothing but the the championship for hours i mean that, yeah that's part of why it's probably so good is riot knows how to do stuff in general their esports scene for league keeps improving yeah and that's why so many people in the fighting game community are looking forward to the fighting game that they're gonna yes. have coming out because it looks super cool it's just tag team fighting stuff but it's gonna probably have an actual really legit esport behind it which is right. nice so but yeah I wish they'd bring Valorant to consoles. I'm a little console mm-hmm. pleb, and I want to play with a controller. Yeah, I would probably like it better with controller for sure. But I think th- it would work really well. I mean, as long as they didn't do crossplay, like that could be a very, very solid. I'm surprised it hadn't happened yet. Yeah, I, I like think cross they've talked play, about it, but it's like the hackers always eventually ruin yeah. it and stuff. Like. They need to just give the console people the option to do it, yeah, which is right. what Halo's yeah, not doing do right now, play. which is a whole other thing. But. Halo does technically have that option. If you play ranked solo or duo, that's the only queue that has oh, the option. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, Valorant number 10, um, if only for some sort of sanctity here, but uh, <laughs> fantastic. Definitely go and play it. Awesome. Uh, Tom, mm-hmm. you're number 10. Uh, my number 10 is uh, Destiny 2. Uh, last December, you had Beyond Light. Right? That's what, it, yeah, that's what it is. And Sorry. I mean, in my opinion, Destiny has like top tier gunplay. Like, if you haven't played it for a first person shooter, like, it's tight. Like, every gun feels good. Like, Bungie definitely knows what the fuck they're doing. Uh, right. Not only with that, but also with their um, season passes. Uh, that come along for everyone you can unlock cosmetics exotics like just going through it and i mean it's free to play base right now i they want to say the last i think beyond light was on game pass i don't it's leaving soon i know that um the writing that they have done for the story these last couple seasons have been like ridiculous way better than anything they've written before um also, that's probably due to because fucking Activision's finally gone. And <laughs> yeah. Activision oh, sucks yeah. balls. But, um, <laughs> no, I mean, I love getting into it. They have all, it's a living game. So they have all the holiday events. Halloween one, the dawning is going on right now, which is the Christmas one. They're always a ton of fun. Um, still hopeful they'll bring back the uh, speeder racing that came. I think it was Destiny 1 that had speeding ra- speeder racing. But that was a lot of fun because just racing. And shouldn't be as fun as it is but it is <laughs> uh, i don't need to say much I, it's just a really good game it's really good writing bungie is fucking fantastic i can't wait for the fucking witch queen that comes out next yeah mm-hmm. yeah in february yeah ryan i know yep. you also got into destiny 2 bit this year i know it, you yep. then dropped off and said no there's too much there's too much it's content. just, it's just <laughs> too much. a lot yeah. like my dad and I used to just play it every night for yeah. three to four hours. Like you can play this game like nonstop. If like I wasn't playing a like bunch of almost, games. what did we look up that one time? It's like five thousand hours. Yeah, I some think crazy he map. has, and yeah. it is ridiculous. I only is only like three thousand, but yeah, yeah, this needs a good There's game. A lot. 
<clears throat> yeah, I I played a lot of Destiny 1, like vanilla. Never got into Destiny 2 just because of the amount of time that I knew it would take. Same reason I have not gotten to Final Fantasy 14, even though I really want to. Uh, Just, it's, it's too big. It's too big. Right. I play too many games. Final Fantasy 14 has been pretty good for me. I, it would probably be on the list if it hadn't been for the fact that I am brand new to the game for the most part, like two weeks in or something like that. So... I understand that, and also I understand that because I have, like, four, five, six different live service games that all have a fucking battle pass that all want me <laughs> to do shit daily in order to make it through yeah. the battle pass. It's, like, as cool as battle passes can be in a lot of games, it's getting a little stupid at this point that, like, every game has to throw one in there. Well, that's, that's just it, like, Destiny 2. That's not the point of this, but <laughs> it's a little yeah. annoying. You don't have to play stuff every day for Destiny 2. That's why I think Destiny 2 and Fortnite probably have the best battle passes structure wise. Yeah. Um, right. Because like if you don't do the dailies in Fortnite, you get fucking supercharged XP next time oh, you play. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, that's on. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, is all, that's what they need to be doing. Like at the very least, Halo did kind of address it with the um, 300 XP that slowly scales down or whatever that they added. And it's a daily that keeps coming back anyway. So 50 experience per game you played. But there's a lot of them that just have like daily missions and that's the only way to gain experience. So, yeah, yeah. The Halo also made a word. But, you know, even if you don't fill out your battle pass, you'll still have it next season. You can do that one mm -hmm. instead of the next seasons or whatever if you don't have the next season. But, uh, yeah, the the way you actually progress in that battle pass is uh, yeah. not great. The fact that doing things in Halo Infinite's multiplayer doesn't matter outside of whatever your quests say. Like, get, yeah. oh, you got a killing spree? Did your quest say to get a killing spree? No, then we doesn't don't matter. We fucking care. <laughs> yeah, then. Or that's like, yeah, I have a quest right now that's play free for all and I don't like free for all in Halo. And I'm just like, I'm not going to get 50 kills that easily. Why are you making me play that? But anyway, yeah. go to the next <laughs> number 10. Uh, whole separate rant video. <laughs> Brian, you're number 10. Uh, my number 10 absorbed the first month or so of my gaming this year was uh, Valheim, the survival game that uh, dropped the indie studio game. Preston, I forgot Preston. it was this year. <laughs> a long year, that. man. Uh, like, this oh, game, shit, can I edit my list? <laughs> I put like eighty hours in this game over two weeks. It really hit me hard at the yeah. beginning of the year. I uh, I really love how they minimalized or just you know made more quality of life to the survival by not forcing the eating mechanic on you. You know, if you're just going to be spending the next two or three in game days building your town, you don't have to eat at all. It just buffs you when you go into battle. Um, and I really really love the building system that scratches mm -hmm. an itch so fucking hard in the back of my head it's not even funny if they ever release like some kind of a creative mode i'm gonna have a problem in valheim that's, <laughs> that's yeah absolute issue. i did play valheim a fair bit at the beginning of the year because my um my girlfriend's brother got hooked on it and then we were like oh well everybody's talking about it we should try it and we did play it for a fair while but like it did fall off eventually yeah but it, it was it was fun for what it was like and it definitely was like if i'm not careful i could probably get hooked yeah. on this mm -hmm. if i had uh, like an active super active like large tribe group server setting mm -hmm. or whatever i would have probably been into yeah. it yeah when um arc or whatever the dinosaur one first yeah, came survival. out i played the crap out of that because i had a very <laughs> designated group that i could play yeah. with every single day so it probably would have happened uh, in Valheim too. If... Yeah. Shout out to Rob for renting a server for us to play yeah. on for a while. So we could just log on and do whatever we wanted with our house in the same world. So other people hopping in and out. Uh, that That's was a, cool. so much fun. Uh, yeah. Very good game. Valheim. I recommend it. I've gone back to it since, since January to see out some of the other updates they've done, but I didn't get very far. So and I don't think I really interacted with it. For us, that was the first game that I really played with like Draft Punks or with you, Ryan, uh, just getting into on that Rob server. Uh, and yeah, they, the way that the resources dwindle in the world over time for mm -hmm. everybody that really kind of forces you out to go and spread out and do different exploration. And like you just kind of like end up pairing off and doing your own group and building what is essentially settlements. And then everyone kind of comes together for these big raids where you have to meet up and you have to 
progress the story together really uh yep. works just so well like there's such a good loop there in terms of yeah. the crafting and the resource gathering that yeah. was yeah instantly hooked oh yeah uh all right tyler you're number 10 my number 10 is a give us the bad game give it to us your horrible list that you said you have <laughs> it's actually the perfect list some would say um, and uh, number 10 is a little ditty called Knockout City. You might have heard of it. Uh, it came oh. out this year, a little, little free-to-play gem from EA that came out of nowhere. It was like, yeah. Play, but... <laughs> got, like, it's up to, like, almost basically free-to-play because there's yeah. the trial up to level 25. It's on Game Pass, and Amazon Prime gave it away for free as well. So Wasn't it's it yeah. almost... on PlayStation Plus, too, at some point? It was. Sure. Did it count? Okay. Was it? So it's it almost that. free to play. It's kind of like Fall Guys, where it's almost free to play. Like, well, it's yeah. free to try. Have... Right. And, exactly. Uh, <laughs> a great game. It was super fun. Came out of nowhere. I think they first showcased it on like a Nintendo Switch. Um, yeah. Nintendo Direct or whatever. And, Which uh, uh, don't recommend was... playing it on the Switch. It was not a good no, time. No, I played it on the PS5. The and it I'm playing on the incredible. Series X. So. Um, it was a really good game when it came out. I mean, we were super hooked on it. We were playing matches every night. We it seemed so like hard. We I mean, so... we were we were like getting com super competitive with it and like really rallying around this fucking random uh, game. And it's a dodgeball game, if I didn't say that yet. Uh, and for that to just come out of nowhere and be so like fun and unique and the actual way that you played the game felt robust in a way, even though it was super simple, like being mm -hmm. able to uh, basically parry attacks, uh, catch attacks, and then choose how you're going to charge your throw and what direction you wanted to hit them with and uh, all the different balls and stuff that you could use to... We're talking about balls again. Uh, all the different <laughs> balls that you could use to uh, Just you know, like attack. It's so cool. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's great. Super fun time. Yeah. This, uh, this also made it onto my list. Uh, this was like... It's when I thought too, about... Yeah what multiplayer games gave me the most fun this year. This was the first one to pop into my head. Uh, there's a reason it landed number one on my Modi list. Uh, and that's because Knockout City really just owned my summer of multiplayer gaming in such a fantastic way. Uh, it's really like, I we really need to go back and play more of that game. It's so I've been, yeah, I still, still got it downloaded it now and then. So uh, I, I have it on my it. list too. It's uh, it's basically the, the gameplay loop of it is addicting and the battle pass setup and everything isn't too extraneous overall to me. Um, they've recently made it where you have to pay for some aspects of battle pass and stuff, but it's not too bad off. But also like the cosmetics and everything actually feel drastic compared to some games like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Final Fantasy VII, the first soldier. It doesn't feel drastic enough. The cosmetics you get Halo doesn't even feel too drastic with the cosmetics you're getting. But that game... <clears throat> the the vibe and the world and the aesthetic it has overall they just can go crazy with the cosmetics so you actually see stuff and you're like oh shit i want that like right now like it actually feels more worth grinding out for cosmetics than a lot of other games so but yeah also just the mechanics are like everyone i know that's into fighting games was getting into knockout city because it's neutral feels very much like the neutral of a fighting game more or less if that makes any sense like yeah i mean it's a it's essentially a third person shooter but it removes any aiming and like it's all about spacing timing and parrying right which is great. it's more of like a mind game sort of thing which is where mm -hmm. what fighting games tend to be you condition your opponent and then capitalize on you conditioning them a certain way for them to screw up. So, and the soundtrack is fucking incredible on top yeah. of it. Yeah. So. The soundtrack is super good. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, speaking of great soundtracks, my number 10 is Everhood, uh, a game that came out earlier this year that most people probably have not heard of. It's an indie RPG, very Undertale inspired in terms of like a really subversive narrative and the art style. And combat in this RPG is like a music rhythm game. It's like basically if you took the gameplay of Guitar Hero, but instead like the notes when they come at the end of the track, instead of you hitting a specific button on a controller, you're like a little guy at the end of the track dodging the notes and jumping over them and stuff. 
uh, which is super fun, uh, especially because the music is so great. And then, like, uh, it, I won't get into it, but there's there are things that happen, like, about midway through the game that really subvert what the game is doing and make it completely different and very cool, uh, weird, hard to hard to talk about. But it's it's super cool. I think everybody should check it out. I think it's only PC right now, unfortunately, but it's very, very good. I think I watched Moist Critical play that a fair bit. So it's it has, like, it looks kind of like Undertale, right? Yeah. And it's, yeah, okay, I've definitely seen it. I saw him playing like a weird ass rhythm game of some sort where he was like jumping and dodging stuff or something like that. So it looks cool. I definitely want to play it. Like it's on my list somewhere, one of my lists yeah. of games to play eventually. I had never heard of it at all. Um, so that don't, that's going to go straight on to my check it out and play it during this, the two week drought that we get before January or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I I, it's like a, a month drought, at least for me now, because uh, Weird West got delayed, and that was the only thing I was kind of looking forward oh, to. Oh, yeah. Really. Isn't Legends in the end of January? Yeah, very yeah. end of January. Yeah. How long? Elden Ring is in February. King of Fighters is in February. Everything's in February, yeah. yeah. Like, there's February's a lot of random hell. crap. How long would you say Everwood is? Um, Probably like eight to ten hours. Oh, okay. um, I thought you were going to say eight to ten inches. <laughs> Oh yeah, you did say Everwood. Everwood. It's Ever, oh, Ever, Ever, Everhood is the name of the game. Everhood. Yes. Oh, I... <laughs> whatever. It's just a dick and balls podcast. Oh, yeah. Yes. Everwood. Just like Tyler's Prom balls. Night. Yep. Uh, but yeah, that's my number ten. All right, uh, on to number nine, Victorian Genetics. Uh, my number nine is Bravely Default Two. It was uh, kind of arguing with Scarlet Nexus, though, because they both had some of the same negatives and positives for me. But Scarlet Nexus doesn't have the soundtrack of Bravely Default 2. And it also doesn't have like the cute aesthetics and stuff. And also Scarlet Nexus, to me, does not compare to Tales of Arise, which is on my list. So Bravely Default's there. Um, I just really liked the job system in the game and the story is pretty fun overall. And then like the job system lends itself so much to experimenting to find ways to break the fucking game. Yes. That you're like, you. I found one pretty quickly. It was like Leaf or uh, the Thief with like a God Cut ability or something. And then you get like a Hellblader to like make it where they're not capped to 999 damage or whatever. And then you just have the rest of your party as like buffers and healers and stuff. And like your thief will just like three and two shot even like the biggest bosses and crap. But then like I've seen people experimenting and finding other ways to break the game through other classes, which is pretty fun to do. Yeah, there are so many broken combinations in the game. It's also on my list. Uh, like the I played 90 hours of that game, 89 hours, uh, according to the Switch clock. And a lot of that was like I probably finished the game at around 50 hours. A lot of it was doing the post game content and then just playing with the jobs, combining different jobs, different passives and seeing different ways that I could beat like the ultimate boss, which if you are abusing broken combos, the ultimate boss it's like the easiest ultimate boss ever, even though it is very challenging if you're playing like if you're not if you're thinking unilaterally and doing things the way the game seems to intend, it's a very hard boss, but there are ways to like bust it open and make it it's super like easy. There's so many like different combinations and stuff that you can get a hold of to break the game, basically, that it kind of feels like their intention is for you to break oh, yeah. the game. Because it's like some of the bosses, unless you're breaking the game, you're like not going to beat them, it feels like. Yeah, it's the best job system like in a game, and I love job systems in RPGs. Uh, also, like you said, the music's really good. The story's surprisingly good. Uh, yeah. Like, it's i don't think it's as good as bravely default or bravely seconds stories it doesn't have those have weird like subversion elements that i don't think this really has but uh it's still really good and like uh the brave default system is old at this point it's been like it's been in two other games but like just being able to save up your turns basically by guarding uh or you can go in debt on turns like take four turns at the beginning of the battle with all your people and have them all be four turns in debt and just do nothing for four turns that's like yeah crazy the intricacies weird and, and everything of the combat is definitely cool so yeah super good rpg it was a super good year for rpgs yeah huh. all right Preston, you're number nine 
My number nine is Death's Door, uh, a fantastically fun little indie, sort of more of like a Zelda-like than like a Souls-like, but it's got the elements of a Souls-like, uh, and it is a ton of fun. Uh, the combat, while it's simplistic in sort of your inputs, is still really engaging, and you can still die very easily in that game. And the progression through uh, through both the stat progression and skill upgrades, as well as ways you can upgrade your character through fighting bosses within the world, is in a way uh, is a, a system that works really well to feel rewarding and fun. And just they there's always something like to every boss that is a little quirk that you can exploit that helps you get through the fight a little faster that sort of like dawns on you halfway through that feels very natural in a way that like a lot of games would highlight, Oh, shoot the fireball into their mouth or whatever. But it feels a little bit more uh, like Nuance. you figure that out on your own. Yeah. Uh, in a way that works really awesomely. I enjoyed the hell out of that game. I got to the final boss and I stopped. <laughs> and, <laughs> I need it to happens. go back to it. It's just something that like I got my ass kicked on stream over and over and over again. <laughs> I was like, ah, I'm, t I'm tired. I'll pick it up tomorrow or next week. And I've only played that game exclusively on stream and I've barely yeah. streamed since then. So I was just like, <laughs> oh, ah, okay. I haven't gone back to it. So I want to go back to it really bad and complete it. But I've seen enough of the game and I do want to go back and actually get all the in map upgrades as well. Yeah. Because there's a there's a sense of reward to those beyond just like checking off uh yeah check boxes on a list you're actually seeing more of the world and participating more of the lore and things like that as you uh go go through it yeah death store is also on my list uh that game has a massive post game too that's really good like almost as long as the base game it feels like uh oh i didn't know that yeah like the you talked a little bit about the combat i love that like you have you basically have pips of uh your ranged weapon but using melee strikes refills your ranged ranged weapon so anytime you have ranged weapon you just you stay back you use your ranged weapon like four times i think is what you start off with and then you get in close you do some melee swipes you back off it has a great rhythm of back and forth mm -hmm. to it that i really like i mean it's not on my list but it's on my list of uh, games that i'm almost positive would have ended up on my list and boot something else out because <laughs> I've watched a handful of people play it and like the aesthetic looks good. It looks like it feels good. And I just like, like the themes that it's dealing with as far as the, I mean, it's just literally called death store. Like, yeah, <laughs> but I haven't had the time or money to get to it. So yeah. it's just like there. Yeah. We didn't even talk yeah. about like you play as a little crow that works at like the office of death and you just like yeah it's a mundane job to like, just go out and collect souls which is a very oh, fun it works idea so well yeah which similarly i want to play that it's not related much but there's that game um did you see it it looks like hollow knight but it's like death do us i can't even remember what it was called mm. they showed it at like an indie world or something it looks like hollow knight and it was something dealing with death like i think that's death do us part right it's That's what I was up. thinking. That till death Maybe. do us part, or something like oh, that. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Cool. It looks like Hollow Knight, Metroidvania style. Like the four horsemen are like fucking everyone up, and they're causing your workload to get too much. So you're like, I'm gonna go bitch slap the four horsemen. Yeah, <laughs> and it's literally that's your whole quest is death is to like go fight the four horsemen. So that game's on my list of games that as soon as it comes out, I need to jump on it. <laughs> Oh yeah. All right, let's go to Tom. You're number nine. Fortnite. Forknet. Hell yeah, brother. I mean, it's a lot of fun to just hop on. Usually it's yeah. just Tyler and I. But get on for like four matches. They've been doing a lot with changing the world this year. Um we had aliens, uh that weird like prehistoric one. The yeah, bounty hunters. Bounty Holy hunters. hunters. Yeah, now a whole new map. I mean, it's a lot of fun just to go in, play a couple matches, um, and be done, you know, for the night. Yeah. I don't know, just it's a lot of fun. Time. I have a lot of fun playing. Shout out to the Fortnites on the Discord. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. That, that's not K- on my list. K N I G H T. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Fork Knights. Very clever. It's it's not on my list just because I didn't want to put any, you know, live service games on, but you know, that is one of my top two or three games of the year it's my go-to it's my comfort food there's nothing better than just like playing a couple of rounds uh, and you know it, just bullshitting in that game it's it's fun to play like to be competitive when you want to be competitive but it's super fun to just bullshit around in that mm-hmm. world because mm-hmm. it's so fucking weird and goofy like having naruto and spider-man holding like mk7s and like <laughs> so just dumb. i may be trees. all out of chakra but i ain't out of options yeah, that's right <laughs> and just like and then they added like web shooters for this season and being able to like swing around like spider-man yeah. all over the map and like it it fucking feels good to play yeah it's, i mean uh, i mean without the we've talked about it so much but it's such a fucking good game it's such a fun experience mm-hmm. every time yeah. Even without the newest stuff, like I was just playing some Fortnite before recording with uh, Chris Bavino, and uh, we came across a lake, and I'm like, oh, look, dude, there's a shark. And he's like, oh, should we kill it? And I'm like, we could kill it, or you could ride it like a jet ski with a fishing pole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because why the fuck not? And then, like, mm-hmm. they're doing the Christmas event right now, and they just have, like, random people riding four-wheelers that are, like, throwing out candy at you. <laughs> yep. have, you like, have you encountered, uh, what's his name yet? The guy that... What's no, I have not. Remember? Yeah, he yeah. comes around in a dump truck and he asks if you've been good or bad. And he will, if you've been bad, I think he just unloads on you. <laughs> so really not bad because he gives me presents, but I've only seen him once. He gave me a peppermint candy and then he threw me a present. And it yeah, was just the fucking weirdest like thing. That, so I was know? just running next to a road and all of a sudden I hear this. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and, and there's a dump truck coming and he just yeah. fucking <laughs> hanging out on it. That's like a. Like, just crazy it's so much fun and ridiculous though. like the game overall it's even if you don't play it it's hard not to know what the fuck is going on with fortnite because like as weird and scummy as epic games can be at times like they've definitely nailed a live service game formula with that because yeah. like it started with what the travis scott concert or whatever it was like you're like oh they're trying new different shit and then they start getting I mean, all the Avengers crossovers. That, and, well, like, that's like the main thing. point. Yeah, that's like the main point where you start seeing them cross over with all this weird yeah. shit. And like now Xenomorph, Street Fighter, Naruto, like all this random crap. There was the Ariana Grande thing. You can have mm-hmm. Kratos killing Ariana Grande, killing John Wick, killing Iron Man. Like, it's just stupid bullshit. And for that, it's like fun to watch. I haven't officially jumped into it enough, but it's just it's yeah, Fortnite. Just, it's, it's hard to argue fun, against like, it, really. Yeah. Exactly. Like there's always new music in the cars. Like, yeah. Popping up. It's just it's really good. Like and, and it's like the discovery of the world as it mm-hmm. mutates over time. Like as the season goes on, and like you said, genetics, I mean they nailed like that live service because it is a constant mystery unfolding on like what they're going to do as they lead into the next season and the next season right. and the next and it's like constantly evolving on top of itself and like subverting expectations of what you're going to get in that kind of a game you know because yeah. like they could add just like like they used to have balloons that you could attach to yourself and you could like mm-hmm. run around and you could jump super high and then as you shot the balloons down off of yourself you would get lower and lower and lower it's just like they're always just innovating it's fucking great yeah the game. it's cool. free basically yeah 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 very true until awesome. they hook you in with the skins and you buy pajama <laughs> skins I, for no reason like i haven't even fully played uh, it yet i had some free credits since they um they dropped uh they stopped doing save the world and we we bought that like way back when or whatever they basically don't touch it so they gave free credits so i used that towards like the Jinx skin and like one or two of the Naruto skins or something like that. Bubble like, Fett is coming out literally in days. I, I, yeah. Like I am, I guarantee you this thing's going to come out. It's going to be 20 bucks and I do not give a shit. I am buying. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I know. Yeah. The well, like of, I play so much League of, money of Legends. I on my game is stupid. I mean, yeah, I'm like that with League of Legends personally. It's like at $2,000. There's some stupid shit right now, which is like 10, 11, 12 years of gameplay, which is, it's just fun to play. So. But yes, yeah. Fortnite looks fun. I bought skins because I'm expecting to actually play it at some point. And I have four kids and I play with almost all of them on it too. Like I and entirely play with Liam and Ollie. Like 
even you know, if you're just playing with kids, they, you know, it's still fun to like run yeah. around like, oh, hey, there's this. And like, just you don't have to really do anything. Like, you get more XP not killing people and trying to be the winner. Yep. That's like my favorite thing to do with Battle Royales, like PUBG. I would just like run into a bush and then hide and then, hide. Mm. And then do nothing <laughs> like the whole freaking game. And then like as soon as someone Classic. sees me, I'll just start running and zigzagging and then hide. And then like I'll get like top two doing that. I have no items, so obviously I'm going to lose. But that's like part of the fun of like even with Fortnite and stuff like that. It's like there's so many random bullshit things you can do like. Fortnite exemplifies the fun of battle royales because there's just so much random crap you could be doing. All right. Uh, let's move on to Ryan, your number nine. My number nine uh, is a game that is criminally under talked about in 2021 video games. I adore this game. I still need to go back and finish the last handful of levels. I've played this co-op with several people on this podcast call. It is something that does not happen often enough as a co-op stealth game. It's on Game Pass with oh, I know play and it's called origami 2 this game and we played this game on a whim one day rocked my world i i, I remember hearing about origami 1 years ago and i'm like oh that sounds fun but i never got around to it so when i saw origami 2 pop up on game pass i was like oh i have to download this especially seeing co-op and crossplay like this is right up my alley yeah i think i have and it downloaded right now but i haven't touched it yet I have done 40 of the 51 levels. It is an absolute joy. I still want to go back and finish it off. Uh, it feels really good. The powers you get feel really meaningful. The variety to the powers is very good. People can really build into different directions. The runes for armor, it, it just feels really good. The story, whatever. I don't care. It doesn't really matter in this game. The story is very bare bones and background. But the the moment to moment gameplay, once you're in a mission with your friends, up to three friends, uh, well, you and two friends, so up to three people, uh, like forming stealth plans the whole way around. Like, it just feels really good. There's a little bit of jank. I'm not going to lie. There's a little bit of jank, a lot but of it, jank. Feels, it feels good even with the jank. I, I mean, I think the biggest jank is when you get into open combat, which the game yeah, don't yeah. Do that. Heavily, heavily discourages, but gives you a lot of tools at your disposal to negate open combat once it starts. It, it like once open combat starts it's not game over it's just oh what tool do i have at my disposal to break open combat and re-stealth myself and and come at this again um yeah i really dig it so much fun really good music uh really fun art style play this game play it play this game with I me mean, preferably that sounds pretty good <laughs> that sounds pretty good to me because uh as much as I like a lot of the newer Assassin's Creeds, the originals to me are better because there was such a huge emphasis on the stealth aspect. And the second you got into like one of those mosh posh things going on, you were like, oh crap, I have to make sure I dodge out, kill just a few people, and then go run in stealth again, rather than like the Valhalla and uh, Odyssey stuff where it's just, it's an action RPG now, basically. Like... Mm. I don't know. So I yeah. that's why I have Origami downloaded on my Xbox from Game Pass right now. I just have not gotten to it yet. It's very good. If you want to play, the let ones me know. I was like, I feel like it, that would possibly be on my list. So nice. Yeah, I got an okay time with that game, but uh, it didn't like blow me away like it did you, Ryan. I'm glad you love it though. Thank and you. I still haven't installed. I didn't uninstall it. I'll still play it. We got to get back to it. We got to get back to it. <laughs> Oh, so many things coming. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprised. Hey, Preston, you looked interested. Well, as you, I was thinking you were going to be talking about another game that is definitely on my list. Um, oh. But the fun that I had with the Ghost of Tsushima uh, co-op that we did mm -hmm. makes me think that I would have fun with Aragami uh, co-op co as well. Yeah, and I know it is still different, but it still like there are similarities through because I mean, obviously in Ghost of Tsushima you can fight. Uh, whenever you actually get into open combat, you have options a lot more, uh, probably. But definitely going to be yeah. something. And if it's on Game Pass, there's no reason not to. Right, yeah. for sure. All right, Tyler, you're number nine. Uh, my number nine is also on Chris's list. Um, it is Neo: The World Ends with You. Um. Chris said earlier that there are a lot of good JRPGs that came out this year. And that is true. That is why this is at the 
upper portion of top high game dog top portion bottom. of the bottom <laughs> top top of the bottom top, the, the bottom, of the bottom. bottom of the your the top bottom of the top <laughs> yeah bottom of the top sure great the uh, power bottom. you get it it's it's somewhere and uh you know, this game is super fun. I played it because of Chris's recommendation. He wouldn't shut the fuck up about it, actually. And was like, <laughs> yeah, people need to play this game. And I was like... I won't shut the fuck up about I, it. Yeah, I have not stopped talking about it. But, uh, you know, he was right. And I played it, and I had a great time. And I kept messaging Chris every time I get to a certain point. And uh, at one point, I was like, is this game ever going to fucking end? And it did. <laughs> and and uh, I enjoyed most of it. Uh, not not enough to like put it up to my number one, number two. But um, I had a really good time. It has incredible style. I said that on the music podcast. Um, the soundtrack is fucking incredible. The story's cool. But the best thing is the combat. The combat is super fucking fun. And how you have to put all these different like psychic powers together and combine them with your teammates to like fuck up the enemies. Uh, the only thing that I didn't really like is the enemy designs were just constant rehashes of the same thing with a different color scheme um i wish the enemy variety would have been a little bit better but overall yeah i mean the game is incredible great time yeah uh that's an interesting complaint we'll talk about tales of rise later that has the, the same issue but I uh, that's just a jrpg thing <laughs> yeah yeah i know unfortunately frustrating uh but uh yeah i i adore this game uh so much uh like genetic said like he wouldn't shut up about it like I love The World Ends With You, but I've only played through it once. You played through it like I 18 times. I played through times. that game once a fucking year, dude. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah. watched the anime twice and it just came out this year. I watched it once in English and once in Japanese. So I have the figures coming eventually They're just on back <laughs> order because everything supply line wise is fucked right now. So yeah. So, so like, uh, I was not planning to pick this up right when it released. It was going to be for a sale or something, but you convinced me to pick it up, and I absolutely love it. I think the story is amazing. Like you said, the gameplay is really good. It's really interesting to control a party of characters, but basically from, like, your camera's perspective, your characters just kind of teleport to where your camera is, but then when you're not controlling them, they're off still, like, participating in the battle, which isn't really interesting. Uh, and the, like, like you said, the soundtrack, it's my favorite video game soundtrack ever. Uh, I absolutely adore the music yeah. in this game. It's uh, like it's better than the first songs one that I I put on repeat like daily pretty much. It's like Unpainted, Breaking Free, Transformation, and then there's like a few others that I can't remember the name of, but there's a yeah. lot of good almost, soundtracks. Almost all of them are amazing. Yeah. My Spotify Wrapped is like ninety percent of my time listening to music was to that soundtrack. Yeah, uh, yeah, just just an incredible, unbelievable game with, and I love that the like lyrics in uh a lot of the songs like line up with the main character's journey uh right. in terms of like learning to be a leader to <laughs> make decisions to uh i don't know just like growing up and uh being what everybody needs him to be which is it's very cool it's a great story that's a really good storyline the game the first one focuses a lot on just the soul person this one focuses more on three different people growing and evolving throughout but it has like a it has a whole lot of sub, I can sub messaging that you have to like kind of pay attention to really notice. Um, but like overall, the the game just oozes style out of every freaking orifice. It's like from the shops, the NPCs, the items, like everything. And then you get into the combat where the soundtrack is banging, and then you're like having to orchestrate these four or five different characters together each on a different button press and then it says keep the beat up or whatever whenever you knock them out with the pin and then the next character you jump in with them and it's like it's almost like a rhythm game that's combat basically and like you're sitting there looking at the battle and i have so many like uh screen share things that i recorded of it it's just like constant fucking eye candy like everywhere you're just like this looks so fucking cool and it comes out the gate looking freaking cool it's not like some rpgs like scarlet nexus isn't full officially on the list partially for it where it took till like the half point of the game for it to start looking good it just starts out looking good like i just really really like the game like it's really really good like there's nothing that compares to it really for me and it also like it toes the line really well of like being nice for newcomers but also like rewarding the people that are invested into the franchise like it towed the line really well for that there's a lot yeah, of newcomers 
that I told to play it and they started playing it and they're like, oh, I'm fine. And I don't need any past info really. But if you have the past info, there's a lot of like cool levels that you can play with in your head and more fan theories and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, uh, on that front real anything. quick, uh, like I, absolutely the game is more welcome to newcomers than I think a lot of like outlets made it seem. Uh, a lot of podcasts yeah. I listen to made it seem like don't play this unless you played the first one. I don't think that's true at all. I think similar to Final Fantasy VII Remake, like towards the very end, it starts kind of doing some stuff that's like seems kind of random if you didn't play the first game. It's like, yeah, but it's more like a nod of any, than anything else. Yeah, it doesn't like detract from the and... overall experience, I don't think. Yeah. And also, like, it has time travel as a very key element to it. I'm not going to spoil anything, but it plays out the whole storyline with time travel very well. Like, it actually yes. wraps itself up nicely, which time travel in most media tends to be kind of a bore and a bomb fest because you're like, you just made so many fucking loopholes. But this game uses the time travel in a way that actually it felt cohesive and it like led into itself into an ultimate max like setting that was just like it played itself up well like it just felt like a well-written story yes yeah the way the way the time travel pays off is incredible uh all right uh we'll move on to my number nine which is death's door which we've already talked about it was also pressing number nine so let's move on to genetics your number eight my number eight is metroid dread um I sort of debated putting it up higher, but I have some nitpicks about it. Um, but for the good, it re feels really good as far as movement and the combat goes. Like, it's very fine-tuned. Um, it's got pretty good visuals, but, like, for me, the negative side of it is it's, like, I feel it's weighed down by being on the Switch, for one. For two... It doesn't fully feel worth the price because there are so many bomb ass Metroidvania indie games that are twenty dollars or they're mm. on Game Pass or whatever else. So like it scratches a Metroidvania itch, but there's other games that can do it better for me. Like I bought this game purely because everybody was so hyped on it, and I was like, oh, it's a almost dead franchise coming back. Let me make sure I show my support for it just as like doing it and i've played through it one time and i'm going through another playthrough right now but it's just like it doesn't fully click for me and also nintendo prices <laughs> play into a factor for me because like i think it'll about never recommending go down. it it'll never go below like 40 dollars and it's also on like the switch they do a lot with it on the switch but like if you saw this if this com company was able to do this on like an xbox series x or some shit like no shot the game would be so freaking good you want and also you want to have like 30 second to one minute load times going between places and shit but like i liked the game overall it's just like there's a slight few things that make other games better for me and it usually comes down to nintendo's at the bottom of the three for me at this point yeah uh metroid Dread is also on my list it's my favorite metroid style game uh yeah. of the year for sure and it's my favorite metroid game like in that series by a long shot uh the only other one that even competes for me is the other one that mercury's team did sam's returns uh just uh, this game is unbelievable like uh the the way that they made samus into such an incredible badass character uh is just like that they she has never been as cool as she is here and she was already a really cool character other than other m which we don't talk about uh, the, the, like uh -huh. the only real complaints I have about the game is that it reuses a lot of abilities from old games. Uh, if you played old games, you'll be familiar with almost everything you get here. Uh, but I think that's a pretty minor complaint, especially, I think it gets by because it's been so long since we've had a proper 2d Metroid game, unless you count Samus returns, which was a remake, uh, that like these things don't feel super old just because of right. how long uh, the space, but, uh, yeah, incredible game, great level design. It's amazing the way they pulled yeah, off the level design's really good too, yeah. The way they pulled off uh Emmys, like uh those could have been oh, incredibly dude, that frustrating. Was so freaking cool. The yeah. Emmy stuff was cool. Like the game as a whole, I really, really, really like, but I just get that feeling like it could have been a cheaper indie development game. Like it's Metroid, obviously, so it needs to be up there and it does have so much quality and polish. It's just like I go and I play Ori, Hollow Knight, uh, 
Bloodstained, so many other Metroidvanias that scratch the itch the same for me that it was like the main thing Metroid Dread has is mobility and everything and the combat feels more fluid than like a Castlevania or Bloodstained but then there's Hollow Knight which is super fucking fluid for me like so that's why it sits at number 8 rather than like way higher for me yeah but uh, like I always say if you're not a stealth game don't put stealth in your game but I think they did it really well with Emmys uh, dude the Emmys are fucking crazy <laughs> like yeah. they were cool uh, especially like when you get the ability to take them down in each area like those fights are also really cool and very cinematic the way they turn your camera it's like stuff a puzzle game amazing. at that mm-hmm. point and stuff where you have to find exactly the right area to get enough distance and charge and all this other stuff which isn't really a spoiler to talk about that stuff because you do you it do it in like the first, first like 10, 10 minutes, minutes yeah. or something yeah uh anybody else have metroid dread on their list want to talk about it did not oh. make it I, i'm about to beat it and i'm gonna beat it but I will never play another Metroid game. Um, <laughs> wow. was, I, I don't know. It just didn't. I. It's weird that it's going to be one of the only games that I make sure that I see through all the way to the conclusion. Um, but it's just not clicking for me at the same time. Like once it does, th- there will be moments of flow where you'll get from, you know, whatever your desk or whatever your starting point is to the next ability and you'll do it very naturally and then you'll suddenly just hit this grinding halt of i'm lost in this map or i'm just stuck on this boss in a way that drives me insane yeah. uh, more so than other metroid manias have in the past like again ori hollow knight you will grind to a halt in those games um, and you'll be confused and you'll be lost or you'll be stuck on a boss but metroid dread for some reason the moments in between aren't as rewarding or aren't as like exciting enough to make me want to see them through. I've been using a wiki like the entire second half of the game. Uh, there was yeah. one part like everybody talks shit about <laughs> Dave Jaffe or whatever. I was like, this is fucking bad game design because there's like the one brick up above. I legitimately did get stuck at that part. I was like, (laughs) (laughs) what the fuck is going on? Like, I did not remember about the breaking thing, breaking bricks, because they tell you about it very vaguely at the beginning of the game. And then, like, you go through a bunch of the game just fine without needing it. And then suddenly you need it. Like, and so I got stuck at that part, too. And I was like, that's kind of whack. But I feel like every Metroidvania has destructible stuff. So I'm not going to really dock points for it. I just think it's funny how everybody talks shit about him getting so passionate and butthurt. He's like, how is this a top tier game, Lola? Whatever. Like, dude, it's a Metroidvania. That's what they do. But I do get stuck on stuff, so I do agree with you. Yeah, like, I I can say that objectively it's a great game. Like, I can see how it is a good-ass game. Right. I can see why people have fun with it and why people appreciate it and why it is a return to form for the series as compared to what I've know of this series before i just it just didn't work for me like it didn't yeah. i never got the full flow and click to make me appreciate it as much as it deserves to be appreciated i think yeah yeah i think uh metroidvanias in general like are so subjective to like how many times did you mm-hmm. get lost how stuck did you get uh because like hollow knight for me is i think a little overrated but that's because i really dislike the map system and got lost in that game all the time but mm-hmm. I, I think it's just lost on that subjective. one, honestly. Like it was very rare for me to get lost in Hollow Knight, but like this Metroid Dread, I got lost a few times. I don't know what it is that's a difference. It probably just is different clicks for different people. Yeah. Yeah. And Tyler hates Metroid Dread, so you don't need to talk about it. It's fine. I don't uh, hate it. It's, <laughs> it's not my favorite game. It's not my favorite Metroid. It was a fine game. The only thing that I really enjoyed, though, was the boss fights. I didn't really care for anything yeah, else. Yeah, the last boss fight in particular. The last boss fight's so yeah. hard and so good. I love it. The yeah, escape it feels, sequence it after rewarding. that, too, was it's like probably the, the coolest Metroid escape sequence to me. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, where are we? We're on number eight Preston. for Preston. Oh, shit. Um... <laughs> Number eight, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Uh, that was this year, right? Yes, yeah, it was. It, is, <laughs> it feels so long ago. Yeah. Uh, really fun game. That's all it is to it. Like, it's just like every Ratchet yeah. game, you're going to just smoothly waltz your way through it. It's not going to be super difficult. You will die a couple times, but the whole time, 
your moving, finding good fun combinations with your weapons and abilities to sort of suit your play style in a way that works for pretty much anyone. Uh, there's a play style that you can run and gun. There's a play style where you can kind of hold your ground and uh, shield yourself against it. You can freeze the enemies. It's just a fun ass video game ass video game. And yeah. I enjoyed the hell out of the time that I had with it. Yeah. Uh, it would be higher with a more, a, a less sort of like MacGuffin storyline. Um, that was frustrating, but that's it. Like, and those games aren't meant to be a super deep storyline. The characters were interesting. I really enjoyed uh, Rivet. I enjoyed the new additions. I enjoyed the changes. I wish they had given her more to distinguish her within the gameplay. But it, it, it's just a good ass video game. Yeah, it, it missed my list. Uh, only like I, I had a blast with it. The only reason it missed my list is because like it's it's very much just another Ratchet and Clank game, which it has been a oh, bit yeah. since we've had a full length one, especially. But like even every every weapon except maybe one or two is a weapon from an old game, which kind of That's annoyed true. me. Yep. But yeah, it's also why it's not on my list. But uh, I, I mean, no I doubt it's a it. really fun item for that game. Uh, Same. I mean, I loved it. I I thought it was a great time. Ratchet and Clank games are super fun, but it just didn't do yeah. enough this time to really distinguish itself. And one of the things I always liked about Ratchet and Clank games was um, getting like the new equipment that would kind of change up traversal throughout the map. But I didn't really feel like they did that that much. Yeah, they, they yeah. focus so much more on the rifts and yeah. that being like the main thing. And it starts so early that, yeah, that that's really yeah, all and, and then it doesn't really change it up enough like yeah. once they introduce that mechanic. And then at that point, it's just like, Hey, well, this is the whole game, and uh, right. it's fine because it works well and it's fun. But you know, they could have just done a little bit more. There's one level in particular that I think is really fucking amazing. It's the one where you're going back and forth in time, on like the mining mm -hmm. planet mm -hmm. um, after it has exploded and before it has exploded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, I think that is super fucking cool, and I love and that it, a lot. That one's super linear as compared to the other ones, but it works yeah. so much well because they can tell the story that they want to tell. And I, I think that's where those games excel is when it's like you yeah. have a straightforward path and we're going to put shit in front of you that you're going to have to figure out how to get around yeah. and figure out what, kind of like what's going on in this like super unique world that we're creating. But there were so many open areas in that game that just felt kind of boring. And the flight is miserable. Like the one thing they did to yeah. try to change it up and add the flight and the zoomer uh, speeder mechanics. And they were horrible, horrible. Yeah, it steer. feels like it controls uh, kind of like a PS2 game. Yeah. Uh, but everything else, like just the core gameplay made up for so much of these other uh, detractors that it made my list still not too high, but yeah. Yeah. So the, did you fly your ship in that game? I don't remember. Is that what you guys are talking about? No. No, you get like uh, you're able to fly a dragon towards yeah. like yeah, at the first. Oh level. yeah, that is bad. Okay, yeah, it was really bad. Yeah, and then also riding on the bugs. Yeah, also feels bad. Uh, I didn't mind that. Uh, I'll say I'm kind of in the opposite camp of you, Tyler, in that I think my favorite level in that game is the one that's incredibly open. Uh, so another game that's on my honorable mentions is Bowser's Fury. Like I'm really looking forward to where 3D platforms seem to be heading, which is open world 3D platformers, which I think it's a really mm. cool idea and worked really well. Both those Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. Mm. Oh, as <laughs> long as they I slow like... him the fuck down. I mean, the I loved all the weapons. I love just the feel of it. Like I had a ton of fun playing this. Like I have not had that much fun playing a single player game. Mm. That's also a platform or like that in a long time. So it's quite actually quite high on my list. So I'm glad that everybody was. No, this game's not great. I it's great. Uh, it yet. <laughs> it's a great I, game. It's on this my list great, of like Knockout City is better. It's on my list of like <laughs> it possibly would have been on the list, but I due to limitations of not having a PS5 currently, it's not yeah, on my do. list. So but um yeah, from what I've seen from everybody and heard or whatever it's like basically if you've played a bunch of the old ratchet and clanks you're gonna have less of a good view on it if you haven't played a bunch of the old ratchet and clanks yeah you're gonna have a more negative view on it but it's still 
a good ratchet and clank game yeah i've and never played a ratchet and clank and i exactly well that's yeah. what i'm that's what i'm getting at you guys yeah. both said you haven't played older ones right. we played those like almost religiously on the ps2 as they yeah. were coming out like same so that was always one, my big christmas gift was a new ratchet and clank game when it came yeah, out yeah yeah but uh i want to play it it looks super fun and um basically Auto i heard mode, people saying awesome. basically i heard people saying it's tech demo the video game more or less yeah, like it's better than that yeah it's higher than that for sure well no uh, like to call it a video game like is still saying something most tech demos don't aren't really a video game it feels like they had a very clear-cut vision for hey we have all these upgrades to the system that we can play off of so they tried to do that yeah but i feel that's more what it was like this is like them on ps5 first like big ps5 game where they're yeah. trying to like see what they can do right exactly well that's what i'm saying that's i'm not saying tech demo in the the negative sense of like mm -hmm. the matrix awakens thing that just happened and stuff like yeah. that i'm yeah. saying which that did look cool granted it it's very just good, yeah. very tech demo there's not much going mm -hmm. on there and more so people are calling it tech demo the video game as in like it's clearly the first it true ps5 game like showpiece very is a better word yeah Besides, like, what did what was Returnal, the a showpiece, uh, yeah, showpiece, like yeah. Besides, like Returnal, but even Returnal, I'd like it. It looks super good and everything, but it it still feels like it could have existed on a past platform mm -hmm. to some extent, at least. But this one, the way you watch, like, I've watched people play it and everything. The shit that you see going on, it like in the pure graphical fidelity of it, does not feel like it could exist on lesser hardware so it yeah. feels like a showpiece to, to me like one of the biggest graphical one of the biggest graphical upgrade games we saw this year was Kana bridge of spirits right where everyone was this is a pixar game this is pixar but in a yeah. video game form and i feel like ratchet did that given ratchet had a much bigger budget much bigger team and all of that Kana still was able to pull off what they pulled off with a very small team but still ratchet was a showcase for like the graphical fidelity like you're saying and the the power of the ps5 and yeah. bringing a cartoon to life like a right a cgi cartoon to life i mean in gameplay and it works so well yeah like i got my series x last year and i have not wanted to play on any of my older consoles mm. because everything just looks so much better and it loads so much better it just it's so much better that it's like what's the point yeah i i certainly do not want to like discredit people's enjoyment of reg and clank like i also oh, really not, enjoyed it i got the platinum i haven't I, even played just... it officially i would probably get the platinum too i like ratchet and clank i'm not trying to dog on it i'm just saying that's like the general consensus i've seen is how much of a ratchet and clank player have you been and then it's everybody talks about the graphics it's video game the video game it's just like it's a solid game you know like Seems yeah. good to me. It would probably have possibly ended up towards the bottom of my list had I played it. Like, cool. All right, let's go to Tom. Your number eight. My number eight was Record of Lotus War, D Lit, and Wonder Labyrinth. Yeah, um, game the Game Pass recently. <laughs> I just yeah. downloaded that. That game oh, is super fun. Like, Tyler, I know you don't like Castlevania games, but. This plays like Castlevania Symphony of the Night. This is not gothic horror, so you can enjoy this. Okay, right? thank you. Because it is anime, and if you have not watched Record of Lotus or any of those animes, I highly recommend it or read any of the manga. But you play as Deedlit, and it has all kinds of characters that are introduced in the anime. Um, Gim is a dwarf who is in the party. He has a, the weapon store in this. Um, it's just a lot of callbacks to the anime and the manga and the novels that have been written. But it's super fun. Like, I think if you've played Castlevania Symphony of the Night, very, very similar. Um, you can get from daggers to bows for weapons. You can interchange them. Um, you can get different... Uh, what are they like? elemental spirits that you can use like one can make you hover there's another one that lets you start things on fire like it's just a very fun game it's not terribly long which i don't mind but apparently a lot of people were pissed that it's not very long i'm fine with it it's got good puzzle design it's just a really fun side scroller 
Like um, to me, it not being very long is definitely remedied by the fact that it's on Game Pass. And ha- do you know how much it costs normally? Fifteen. Uh, yeah, right it was like twenty bucks on Steam when okay. it came out, which was earlier like, this year. If it's a game that costs twenty bucks, then for me, game length complaints don't hold any merit. It's once it's like forty or sixty where to me it starts to hold some merit. I don't know. What if it's Probably thirty minutes me, long, like that Bright Memory Infinite game? <laughs> Like, okay, at that point, maybe Wait, you really? can, but... <laughs> yeah, apparently it's highly replayable, but it was like 30 minutes to an hour long. Whatever. Oh my god. Tom, did you ever play uh, Luna Knights? A chance? I don't know. It sounds familiar. Um, this game looks very similar. <laughs> You're just looking like... up random games now. No. Hey, let's recommend I mean, games. literally, what, no, Castlevania I'm, Symphony It looks exactly like this like game. I'm thinking he would like it. It's like, know. that's literally what it was modeled after, was Symphony of the Night. Yeah, yeah, it looks cool. Tell. I'm at the Steam page right now. I like it. Yeah, it is a very it's fun game. Um, I have said it before. This anime is like one of the first anime series that I had watched, and it is very awesome. Like very dark fantasy, you know, normal. You got your knight, dwarf, elf, you know, thief. Like that's the party that goes to do what they need to do, and it's just a very good, very good a anime. Movie? It's a very good game. Is it a contained story? Or are you going to be lost if you didn't watch the anime? No, it takes. Uh, I believe it takes place. You don't. You don't have to worry about have being having seen the anime. Like you can play the game and you'll be fine. Like it's still a good, solid game, okay. and it kind of takes place in between the two sets of anime series. Okay. Yes. So. I'm going to need you to say the name one more time. Record of Lotus War. Record. Deedlet in Wonder Labyrinth. Diglett Diglett Wonder is, I'll write it down. Deedlet is the name of the elf. The female These are elf. definitely D and D notes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's cool though, and I'm interested in the anime as well. Like as the companion piece, like that just sounds like it'd be a sweet anime. Uh, yeah, I got my yeah. daughter the novel last year for Christmas, um, and cool. it's fucking fantastic. Like the artwork is just straight awesome late '80s anime. Okay, yeah, sweet. All right, but yeah, super good game. Ryan, let's move on to your number eight. My number eight is the uh, Knockout City, which we already talked about. Great game, awesome. Good game. Loves throwing balls Never at people's faces. That's right. Very good at it. Uh, Tyler, your number eight. Hey, forgot I was next. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ryan okay. was so quick, just like Tyler's prominent. That's right. <laughs> Um, my number eight is Cyber Shadow. Um, this game came out very early in the year. I think it was like February. I think it was January. It was very early. I couldn't remember. Um, I I think it was January uh, because it came out like right after sort of the Necromancer thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's a great game. 16 bit side scrolling puzzle platformer. Um, not really puzzle, I guess. Yeah, action, action, action platformer. platformer. Action platformer. Yeah. Action puzzle. Yeah. I, I, well, <laughs> it's, the reason I, I thought of it as a puzzle platformer is because, like, so many times you're going through that game and the platforming becomes a fucking puzzle <laughs> because you're like, how am I going to jump off of this thing and then hit this thing at the perfect timing to get another jump so I can jump to this thing and then hit this thing and get the perfect timing and just keep these chain reactions of jumps and slashes going. Um, the movement in that game feels super good. Uh, just jumping around and slashing stuff and keeping these like chain reactions um, afloat. Um, the combat is fun and the boss fights are super cool and the story is badass. I mean, it's really all you could ask for in a 16 bit platformer, in my opinion. It, like, it hits every note in that aspect and I, I just had a great time with it. And the last boss fight was one of the most challenging boss fights I've played this year. And, um, it felt so good afterwards, you know, it was one of those moments where it's like when you defeat a Dark Souls boss or something where you're just like, fuck, yes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and anything that can make me feel like that is like a winner in my book. Did you play Ghost Runner? Oh. No. Because I, I literally thought you were talking about Ghost Runner for a second. It's yeah. literally like a puzzle action game like yeah that one's in first person though uh, that game does yeah, seem really cool a, i heard it's basically it's unplayable cool. with the controller though but maybe oh, the person okay. who said that was just I, bad 
I don't know. I've done a fair bit with the controller, but I haven't beaten it yet, so I can't say for certain. Uh, yeah, I played Cyber Shadow earlier this year, too. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit, but for me, it felt like uh, The Messenger, but not nearly as good, which is a game I adore. So I, I couldn't get like super into it, but I did. I mean, I finished it. I had a good time, and it's got a great soundtrack. Possible Modi, right? That's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, my number eight is Bravely Default 2, which we've already talked about. Genetics. Uh, my- What's your number seven? Um, my number seven's Knockout City, which we already talked about. So hell yeah! All right, Preston, Let's your number seven. Go. We're rolling now. Number seven, prepare to get wrecked. Uh, we'll be here a while. It's Forza Horizon Five. Uh, uh, ooh, that was in contention for my list too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and li- little known fact about this game: Ryan loves Jimmy's. <laughs> <It's> true, <laughs> so. Loves no. him. No. Best car in the game. game. We'll show you where to find it. Trash. (laughs) Get out of here. It's fun. It's so much fun. You get lost in that game. It's gorgeous. That is the Xbox Series X showcase game. uh, Way more than Halo Infinite is. Oh, Halo uh, Infinite could have existed on the Xbox. Yeah. It it does, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess it does. Well, so does does Horizon Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess they do. Um, Oh, they, they both, both do, yeah, but they're both it, like... And it's scaled down, of course, right? But Horizon is just so gorgeous and so much fun, and it is definitely one of those games where it's the uh, see that mountain, you can go there, and it's a hell of a lot of fun to get there. Uh, the there are I know there are complaints about sort of like the way that they've implemented the open world systems and sort of like uh, player interactions, but... I didn't really play a whole lot of the other ones. And so I don't have much to compare it to other yeah. than player interaction being... that I don't like is the heavy handed tournament that Ryan created just so he can fucking stunt on all of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't not played a, a crap ton of it, but I've played enough <laughs> of it to where I've kept the like 100 gigabyte file on my Series X because I'm like, yeah. oh, I'll probably load that up and still just and it is fuck one... around a little bit here and there. Yeah, and exactly that. Like, you can get as deep into the game as you want, and you can go after collecting every single car and getting first place and beating everyone else on the leaderboard, uh, or, like, on your friends list on the leaderboards. Or you can just jump in, dick around for a little while, and just have a good time yeah. and be sort of as competitive as you want to be. Or, yeah. again, you can Mod- play yeah. race, like, D-class jalopies and have a that, still a That's time. where it's at right there. Yeah, Race, yeah. racing d classes for like 30 minutes you can across be on the track a team with, three, with three other people that you supposedly do a podcast with and they just put you into the wall me and tyler yeah. play it like fucking mario kart and everybody okay, else right. I'm every racing game is mario kart and nothing will ever be better than horizon is like the only racing game that i can play um just because it's like it's not on my list, but it is like the only racing one that I enjoy. Like I can't do Forza, Forza Motorsport yeah, or yeah. Gran Turismo. I can't go around in a circle for fucking six hours like Ryan can. Well, and well, there's so many that. <laughs> there's so many tweaks for people that aren't hardcore into this, like where you can just download someone else's uh, setup. Thank God, I, that's very yeah. necessary. And you can still like really make your car the best for what you need it for for that specific race, and you can do it for relatively yeah. cheap considering how often you get money in that game yeah and i think i'm most comfortable in the a's like i do i i fucking loathe supercars and that's fucking mm-hmm. games I like, like i'm just everywhere game. i'm like fuck that like i like a's where it's just like it's good enough that you can actually feel like you're doing very well and still like not losing do control. fun maneuvers and not fucking take three hours to do like a 150 yard fucking lap but yeah. I don't know. I enjoy the horizons, yeah. but yeah, it's not on my list. But yeah, that's like the only and and the music selection is usually pretty good. And I don't know, it's, it's a fun game to just screw around. They played a "Bring Me the Horizon" song, which is one of me and my girlfriend's favorite bands. Overall, we were like, "Oh my I god!" I like that, but I do not like the song that they chose for. Oh yeah, the that. song they chose is it's teardrops, right? Yes. Yeah, that's the one she definitely always like. Is like I kind of want to skip, but it's still "Bring yeah. Me the Horizon," so yeah. I like it. Whatever. Mm. But it's like it's the one she's always like it's one of their worst songs. So, but yeah, yeah uh, their music choice overall is good too. Hey, this is of oh, course go, go on ahead. my list. 
of course on my list uh this was not not the gonna car be guy no way as, as someone who is uh a very Jimmy lover and go shut the fuck up <laughs> the guy who plays snow runner and stuff no yeah it's almost almost 300 hours of snow runner uh, no way yeah. <laughs> he likes the car yeah. game uh no it, it handles exceptionally well i think i do prefer uh dirt handling in forza over asphalt handling i still think gran turismo mm -hmm. has the best asphalt handling video game on the market um but it handles exceptionally well the vehicles uh are numerous and all feel very good even if you're more into the custom tuning the options you have for custom tuning a vehicle are enormous there are so many options engine conversions uh chassis conversions transmission conversions it's a huge degree there is a lot of custom customization to the building aspect of the cars in this game the liveries are insane some of the liveries i have seen on the cars are just an absolute joy um yeah i mean it's it's so good i i uh i don't think i've ever gone from level zero to level 120 something in under two months on a game but i'm like level Jeez. 127 <laughs> on forza horizon nice. yeah hey i got like 200 skill points in five seconds on resident evil 60 the day so i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and the way that they like implement your progression against other people like i know early on it was i think tyler and i on the leaderboards for the like just finding boards or whatever Right. And then there would be random um, random uh, races that Ryan would go and just clear me off the leaderboard just to be a dick. And it like... That's Ryan's favorite still. thing. <laughs> <laughs> to defend myself, I was just doing races. I wasn't going out. No, I know. I know. <laughs> Whatever. Uh -huh. and it, like, uh -huh. That's again, not what he told me. Yeah. But it keeps like, it in a way shit. that is attainable to... Like, it's not putting you up against whoever is the top of your friends list on the leaderboard. It's something it's the like closest, you can yeah. get to the next level, yeah. Right. And so you constantly feel like you're in competition with people that you, people that I haven't played with in ten years or whatever that, mm -hmm. uh, that I don't speak to, but it's still just fun to kind of like knock off their record. Yeah. You send them a uh, message, haha. -ha. Fuck yeah, good idea. Sucker. Oh yeah, how's your family, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely something to be commended is the drive guitar system. I think the AI is way better in Forza than in Gran Turismo, but I'm not, you know, I'm not saying something new there. People know that Gran Turismo AI isn't the best AI in racing, but it feels so good. Um, you yeah, know, the, the AI is very good. It it definitely provides a challenge when you find the difficulty level that really suits your needs. But I do think that once you hit a certain difficulty level, there is some extreme bullshittery in Forza Horizon 5. I've seen NPCs 100% throttle through turns and not lose grip at all. Just yep. like, yeah, yeah, no way. No. I get good in your team I mean, there, Ryan. I, there's definitely some of that that goes on. But like, uh, just an off note, because since you're talking about AI, but like Microsoft has always felt like they have the best handle on AI in their yeah. games, because like the first few Halos, you were like, what the fuck are these mm -hmm. bots even doing? And then Halo Infinite comes out and they're like, oh, the first beta, you can only fight these bots or whatever. You and you have like ass. pro fucking FPS yeah. people getting rocked by bots. It's <laughs> like they've definitely always had a pretty good handle on AI. And if only yeah, the bots that point. replaced your drop teammates in Halo Infinite now were God. not trash. <laughs> 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 I know. They have to make sure they're like about the skill level of the average player is probably it. Yeah. Oh. So I'm above average. Or ever, literally average everybody I've ever played with is above average. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? Uh, we play a lot of games. Yeah. I like uh, Forza, j just to talk about the online a little bit. I think the online's a little janky, or at least it was at launch where like you form a team, but then like when somebody starts a race, first of all, only the team leader can start a race and then everybody has to like push a button to join the race. Otherwise yeah. you get kicked from the party and you have to completely reform the party afterwards. And it's a huge pain in the butt mm -hmm. that the like share there's... waypoints, stuff like that drives me nuts. Yeah. yeah. A lot of stuff with the online needs a little fine tuning, but it is super fun. I, I think my big thing with Forza Horizon five and like, I totally get Ryan, like why this would be on your list this year, because you, you play for you play the other Forza Horizons and you've done literally fucking everything in them. Cause you're an insane person. Uh, but like for for a lot of people, it's like why I don't know why you would play Forza Horizon Five over Forza Horizon Four it, when there's probably a million races in Forza Horizon Four that you haven't done, and they just feel very similar to me, like basically the same. But there's a ton of new stuff here if you've already done a lot or all of the stuff in Four. 
Well, they don't have Jimmy's in four, so. Oh, interesting. I got the new Jimmy. Which means yeah. four is a better game. Oh, <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> hmm. uh, all right. Also, no Lego mode yet, right? That's true. true. Their first DLC true. is always weird. I think the first DLC for Horizon 3 was Hot Wheels, and then Horizon 4, it was Legos. Who knows where they go? I don't know. Uh, what is it, Mega Blocks or whatever? The, the shitty Legos? <laughs> <laughs> go to uh, Erector sets. It's, it's going to be that. Minecraft. Ooh. It's like Tyler's Prom Night. Ooh, they out the Minecraft Erector down. set. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Uh, all right, let's go. Tom, your number seven. Uh, my number seven is not liked by some of you uh uh the ascent i really enjoyed it um i played it after nobody wanted to play it anymore and it (laughs) was a lot of fun like i don't know the abilities that you get later on are way better than the ones that we had like the map itself is garbage but the dead space waypoint tracking is cool um story is pretty much just like whatever but this is my like niche really the cyberpunk i'm very shadow run so i had a lot of fun with it even when i had to play by myself i mean it would be nice if the online was not completely fucking broken at least when we were playing it was just constant disconnects and bs yeah Yeah. but i mean they also have been updating it consistently like they are adding content like almost every two weeks i see them post something on twitter because i follow the studio um so they're constantly working on it to get it like way better and adding new stuff. Um, I know they are making it snow now, I think, for the uh, holidays. And I don't know. I had a lot of. I had a good fun, fun time. Yeah. yeah I think I the reason I had to pull off of it was because I didn't have an Xbox Series S at the time. I just had my Xbox one and uh, it ran like ass on that. Yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't able to really play it. Um, load times were just bad and you know it just caused all kinds of issues and then we yeah. had something else come up like super quick after yeah. that yeah i mean even once you got your series s i think we tried one play session but then me and ryan's on pc kept crashing too so i don't know or actually that's I was, what it was I, yeah i don't remember i was playing pc playing or series else. x i don't know i was also playing series s yeah and we were still having issues i don't know it was fun enough but definitely a little too buggy for me to i didn't even put at it at the time yeah yeah I mean, I appreciate also, that you enjoy it a lot, Tom, and it's definitely, like, it's not super my aesthetic. I'm more fantasy than sci-fi, especially cyberpunk, but, uh, like, if it's your aesthetic and it's your thing, like, I think it does a good job at that aesthetic. I think the town looks super cool that we visited, the city. Yeah. yeah. I will absolutely also one of those ones I'd like to go back to at some point, too, and check it yeah. out. Cause it's yeah. Because it's just, it, it was broken. It, I played it for the launch weekend, and, yeah, I was trying to play it co-op, and you would have just entire sections of the world not even loading in as you were trying to walk up to it and things like that happening and this is on pc uh but what they did once it worked it worked really well and it was a lot of fun and that sci-fi setting they absolutely nailed it and so yeah it's it's super cool looking world that they have yeah if they're polishing it up and it's it'll probably be one that i go back to and it seems like as long as the connection is stable, it seems like an awesome co-op game. Yeah. All right, Ryan, you're number seven. My number seven, a little indie game called Lake that got a little critically panned in my view. I really <laughs> dug the game. It stuck out in my mind. <laughs> I see this face, Preston. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It stuck out in my mind. It's just this really special experience getting to meet. This is characters. the skinny dip, skinny dipping game, right? Where you just go on the lake. <laughs> oh, was there skinny dipping? Now no, I that's know Leisure Suit Larry. Uh, also, I on on Ryan's goatee list. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> Uh, no, you're just this middle-aged lady who's watching her parents' house for two weeks while they're on vacation. You're coming back to your hometown after uh, moving across the country and working in a city for a lot of your, you know, young adult life. And, you know, you, you're you having a lot, of the, a lot of, like, I guess kind of middle-aged thoughts. But, like, you know, do I want to move back home? Do I want to stay in the city and focus on my career? I don't know. I thought it was just a very, like, down the down to earth life Mm -hmm. you know game about life it was very relaxing it had very chill music that really fit the Mm -hmm. late 80s vibe it was going for uh and i just had a really fun time over my i don't know eight hours or so of playtime, and it just hit game pass yeah yeah Uh, Yeah, uh, i checked it out just this week 
Yeah, and also for some reason, when you come home to visit for two weeks and watch your home, you become a male person with no training, which seems very illegal. But yeah, I was you. about to ask: Is it it's the eighties carrier game? It's <laughs> the eighties, and it's a blast. Like it is, they use yeah, the they can't run people able. over. You just do cocaine Look, and fucking deliver mail. Also, <laughs> love <Death> Stranding <laughs> and for the mail. Sumi. This is, <laughs> but it, that's what I was going to say. A, this is definitely the game for the guy that put three hundred hours on the snow runner. Like, just, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, but it, it, they use it really well as a vehicle to like meet new, meet people that you've met before, right? Like it's, it's mm-hmm. not just the gameplay mechanic. They use it narratively effectively. Uh, and to like introduce interesting subplots that I never saw coming. Like I never, I don't think anyone cares if I spoil nope. things about Lake. No. Right. Uh, yes. I don't think so. Don't, we're if you me, actually don't care. Forward. Yeah. Uh, skip forward like a minute. Be careful. Yeah, probably. Uh, there's this really Wait, interesting yes, subplot about an, so confused. about an illegal baseball gambling ring running through the, the mail oh, department. That's actually kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, okay. like there's there's fun stuff to be had. It's not it's not a ten or anything, but it really left an impression on me. It really put a good good smile on my face. I really enjoyed Lake this year. I spoilers are done. Uh, spoilers are done. We can tell Tom to put his headphones back in. <laughs> I had a similar <laughs> experience like that with unpacking. Um, Dude, this packing was so cool. I was close to considering it, but the fact it's the same as the Metroid Dread thing, but it's like the fact that it's $20 and it kind of ends pretty quickly. Yeah. Like it ends super quickly. Like his half hour thing I is pretty close night. to unpacking. <laughs> I think it was but like yeah, three four hour. Is, well, it's just like a very unconventional way to present a video game. And it does a, it does like, the mundane task as part of the storytelling narrative that yeah. just gets you to in unpacking, you learn the history of the character and Through Lake, you also learn that, stuff. right. And in Lake, you learn the history of the character just through your interactions with the townspeople. Right. Uh, but is the twist at the end that you were in purgatory all along? Cause that's the way it feels. Got him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was, <laughs> It, it's better it, it's, than hell. It's true. <laughs> Is it though? Uh, that's that's Dante's Inferno from however many. Yeah, uh, that's what she would have been doing. Uh, but it's it's a it's weird because it does it feels like it's got that hard indie jank to like anytime you get out of the mail truck you just like pop next to it and then you're yeah. like running all weird. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot of like polish un, unpolished sort of things to it but there is a just a comforting sweetness to the entire world as you're walking through it and just a relaxing nature of driving through and driving by the lake is uh it it would not make it to my top 10 but i do want to spend more time with it i only played like an hour yeah uh, and no so that's I, right i realize i'm a freak and why it's on my top 10 <laughs> is that reason <laughs> I just one of the weirdest things to me about that game is the way that the people interact back with you. It'll just be like Maud from the diner. Hey, I haven't seen you in years. Well, bye. It's just like <laughs> that. It's all the conversations the conversation are just like awkward, have. abrupt. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really it, it's it's kind of piecemealed, right? You know, you get like a little bit on day one and then a little bit on day two yeah. and you bring in the mm-hmm. next back. Yeah, so that's fair. I, yeah, I remember I when you slept with my people. son. <laughs> well see you later have a good one <laughs> uh it's it it's good though i i played the demo earlier this year uh i played maybe like 30 minutes of the demo because it was super broken on stream so i stopped playing but uh it, it felt like a hallmark movie hallmark original movie <laughs> yeah you know what i don't so hate if that you're comparison. a middle-aged woman you are gonna love this i don't hate that comparison <laughs> but i think it's like it it works really well in that video game. Like that's fair, because it's like that's kind of what it's aiming for. But it comes across as such, and they nail it in a good way. They don't like over cheese it or mm-hmm. tr- you know try too hard in any one way, shape, or form. It's just like I, every trailer I saw felt yeah, kind of like a Hallmark gift card, <laughs> and that's the game I got. And then I'm so happy about it. Yeah, yeah K song K song is great. I'll say that we listened to last week. I think it doesn't feel. It doesn't feel natural, but it feels authentic. Um, and like the writers sort of knew what they wanted to go for, but 
it's just a mm -hmm. low budget indie game. So they, yeah. there was, there's a lot of barriers between what they were trying to tell and the way it's presented. Oh yeah. All right, Tyler, you're number seven. <sighs> My number seven is Resident Evil 8. Village. Uh, Village. Yep. You can call it, it's um, fine. Yeah. Eight itch. Eight -itch. Uh, Eight -itch. This game is hard to talk about because we played it so early in the year, it felt like. Um, and it was pretty short. This came and went, but man, that game does some really unique shit for the Resident Evil franchise. It has one of the coolest interactive things that I've done in a very long time as far as House Beneviento and just if like you know, the puzzle know. design. What is it? No, it's Beneviento. I said, if you know, you okay. know. Uh... Yeah. I thought you said it again and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> the reaction, uh, watching people like a reaction compilation to the House Beneviento or whatever was like the best thing ever. If, that yeah, part and, is really uh, it's cool. the scariest yeah, thing that's ever been in Resident Evil. Yeah, and yeah. it gave me like this really special moment with my wife because I was streaming it and she was sitting there with me and we got to that point in that house <laughs> where shit <laughs> starts popping off. And it was just like this super fun moment of just her and I experiencing this super unique thing together. <laughs> Is that yeah. the one you were streaming that I watched? Because that was yes. very funny. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, um, my... just, that whole game okay. is fun. It's but, like... no, you got it. <laughs> That they're yeah. not being spoilers for it makes me not able to say the random fact that I know about it. Mm. Yeah, uh, <laughs> let's try to avoid spoilers. But um, yeah, but, sure. yeah. My my mom watched me play that game. Uh, for some reason she hates horror, and the, the that whole house Beneviento. She was just like under a blanket. Like, is it over? Is it over? Can I take this blanket <laughs> off my face? Uh, it, it's the worst. And the sound design in there, like uh, you you got to plug your ears oh, too yeah. if you're trying to avoid it. The sound design's amazing. But like even outside of that, like that that's the one non-action part of the game. The rest of the game is very action oriented and it's the best action that Resident Evil has ever had. The best like progression in terms of upgrading your weapons and doing multiple playthroughs to fully upgrade your weapons. And you get to a point where you just have guns that are one shotting things with infinite ammo and it's absurd and even the highest difficulty in the game. Uh you can kind of brace through. Not not really, because it is like you'll die in two hits, but I had a great time with that game, played through it five or six times uh, to get the Platinum Trophy, and I did all the mercenary stuff and got S-plus on all that crap, which is super, super hard, but super rewarding to, like, because it becomes like a puzzle game of figuring out the route and what weapons you need to use and stuff, and it's super fun to figure that stuff out on your own, especially on the hard versions where you have, like, it's very specific guns. I think you have the grenade launcher and, like, a magnum, but you have very limited ammo, and you have to do a lot of knife usage. You have to manage your buffs that you're grabbing because it's kind of like a roguelike mode almost which is very cool uh yeah i i, I adore that game uh like the story i can honestly take or leave i think it's a good story for resident evil but yeah that's that's one of the things i was going to say is i think it has one of the better stories and i i think it gives uh some really cool context to it, this weirdo character of ethan winters and uh I think it I sets think... up the possible future of resident evil pretty nicely too oh yeah as far yeah, as the way it sure. ends so yeah, yeah, so and, uh, go ahead. No, no, you got you're it. good. No, you. Oh, I don't remember what I was going to say. Preston, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you got? Awkward. Ah, okay. So for the uh, for village, if you are terrible at action, um, oh my god, survival horror games, yeah. are you still going to be able to play through it fairly easily on normal? Like, is, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> like. The the aiming in that game always felt a little bit off. It wasn't quite on. I, I think this is the best it's ever been. It felt okay. I I think it felt good to play. I I enjoyed the combat in the game. I mean, it is a little slower as far as zooming across the screen and stuff. It doesn't feel as twitchy as like you know Halo or mm -hmm. Call of Duty. It, like Call of Duty campaigns, even those feel twitchy. Um, it's very methodical. And it's got like a certain heaviness to it. It's yeah. Uh, that's the only way I can describe it. It's like a slow heaviness of the combat, but I think it's super good. I, I think it's great. Yeah, I think that game. If you're playing on normal, and especially if you're playing on higher than that for your first run, uh, it starts off really, really hard. It starts off with a really hard section that like village survival Dude. thing. But once you get but beyond it's that, it's supposed it's, to be hard. It's I, I out. watched. It's kind of the point. I watched Maximilian dude play it and like he always is one of those people that just jump into the hardest difficulty and he was doing that village raid thing 
and he kept dying and like getting so frustrated with the game for like two fucking hours i'm like dude you're playing on the hardest difficulty and you're not even like properly thinking things through is your issue right now like yeah I've you seen have to just play it on enemies. the hardest difficult yeah i've seen people play it on the hardest difficulty and still get through that part just fine it's difficult but like they don't have any complaints it's like it's definitely uh, that part and even other 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 parts throughout the game are just like you need to think a little bit before you're going. You can't just like blatantly go and do shit. Like, yeah, it's are a, you able to very much difficulties game. as yeah. you play. Like, yes. can you drop? Oh, okay. Yes, and on yeah, easy, like uh, my big problem with easy mode is I wish there was an easy mode where you could turn off the very heavy auto aim for people that want to play on easy because the auto aim is it's disturbingly like you can't miss a shot <laughs> uh, on easy, and there's no way to turn that off that I saw, which kind of blows, but I think the game plays really well on normal. But okay. it, that, it again, that first village survival pieces. is hard. It's got, like, the first survival village thing at the very beginning. It's also kind of a set piece, um, which I think really sets you off on what that like, campaign is going to be. And there are so many awesome set pieces within that campaign and like that story and what you get that, you know, I still think back on like the house with uh, all of the villagers in it. That's a very crazy fucking moment. Um, you know, you get to go to a factory at one point and there are crazy fucking moments in there. I mean, the, there's just all these little things that happen that I think are so well done. And like the Thank characters God. are super like realized, like even the uh the villains enemies and, and stuff, like yeah this family that you have to go against um it just feels really flushed out and alive and it's crazy i love I it i was gonna say if you wanted to say what the the some of the factory stuff looks like you probably can considering there were articles on every fucking website showing pictures of the enemies because of that whole like they stole the design from this guy or whatever yeah, thing that was going on for a while is, there. i think it's a lawsuit that's still in the air or something i don't know what well, is wow. it i didn't even know yeah, that I didn't know it was like an official lawsuit or anything. I just heard people Maybe it's like not. complaining that they were stealing a design from somebody. And I was like, we're kind of at that point with media, don't you think? Where it's like you take clear cut inspiration from a lot of other things. What yeah. else are you going to do with a freaking freaky ass metal guy who works a, a factory that deals with all the zombie bullshit? Like, wh what else are you going to do? <laughs> like, yeah. Anyway. It's I don't play those games typically. I watch them. I did have Final Fan or not Final Fantasy. Fuck. I I'm thinking of Maximilian dudes playthrough and he's obsessed with Final Fantasy 7, but uh <laughs> I watched playthroughs for Resident Evil 2 and I still put it on my top 10 games because I watched every single fucking person play it pretty much. I was like obsessed with it and it's like I can't play those games for crap i get too scared like i get too invested into the characters and stuff to do that i need somebody else playing it and like their reactions and stuff but i watched a crap ton of resident evil village playthroughs and it's not on my list because i did eventually decide that's probably not the best way to do that but if i had played it it would have probably ended up on my list yeah it's it's definitely an amazing game and if it weren't for the fact that for some reason the speedrun community like shuns doing normal difficulty runs it's like easy runs hardcore runs and village of shadow runs is all they care about i would be speedrunning it probably because i would like to speedrun that game on normal i i love it um yeah it's definitely weird how that works and um, also i'll uh i was gonna s tell preston um I know Max did some kind of controller setting when he started it, and he said it felt more like a an yes. actual traditional shooter game. Like, yeah, I think Rob uh, it was that dropped that in our Discord when the game came out, and that did help a lot. I don't remember what the setting is. I'll have to yeah, find I'll it in there. But... I'm, that's what I'm telling. Like, basically, I'll yeah. go check that playthrough, and I'll message it to you, whatever it okay. was, or if he finds it or whatever. But a lot of people say they change that thing, and then it immediately feels... Oh yeah, I think it's like a adaptive aim speed or something where basically it starts moving slow and then gets to normal speed. You turn that off and it's just normal speed all yeah. the time and it feels a lot better. That's how Control was, and I hated it so much. <laughs> uh, I loved Control, but I hate that adaptive speed thing. Uh, so that's good to know. I, that's good to know you can change that. Yeah, that should probably help your control feeling issues yeah. or whatever. Awesome. 
Uh, all right, my number seven is Metroid Dread, which we've talked about. Uh, so genetics, your number six. My number six, which I did tell Chris was at my number five, but I have pushed it down several times, is Tales of Arise. Um, it's a if very you're play the game, grab a pillow, take a nap. We're gonna talk about it it's, for a while. <laughs> it's a very good looking game. All my the call the characters are very <laughs> well done overall. Um, but for me, the story hit some drag points. Like I'm not even fully through it because it's like it feels like it starts to lose the focus on the characters and it starts focusing too much on the overarching story, which is kind of generic RPG bullshit anyway to me. Like if it, it's fine. And then like the enemies <laughs> are way too samey the whole way through. And then, I'm sorry, Ryan just launched Loop Hero while we're having this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then combo routes that are afforded to you get a little too the same the whole way through. Like, I, I've been playing as Dulcim. I can't even... Dulcim. What, yeah, Dulcim. It's pretty close to the freaking... No, it's Dulcim, actually. Dulcim is, is, yeah. is, is, is a fucking is, character. Yeah. Fighter. yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Okay, <laughs> I played as Dulcim a lot, and he's, like, my favorite character besides, like, Kisara. And, like, I really like his combat flow, and there is, like, a lot of different stuff you can do, but it kind of feels like you're just... You drop into cookie cutter mode to get through the fights because it just doesn't feel the best. And then the one other thing for me is I like the CP system, but the economy that they established around the CP system is freaking stupid. I bought the collector's edition or whatever, so I get the DLCs or whatever. And I have a 40% off of your item shop items. So I was paying 1800 for orange gels. I was like, this is freaking stupid and then i found that artifact and i turned it off and i was like it cost three thousand um excuse me what like yeah it's, it's uh, so stupid the economy is fucking ridiculous for the first like 20 hours the economy is really yeah, bad it gets better but like eventually you get to a point where it's a little bit better off but it's like i don't know i think it's really good and it's definitely one of the top tales games it's just that I would rather the Tales series not take certain aspects from it moving forward because I still think like Graces has a better combat system, Graces F specifically, and then I still think that like Vesperia and Symphonia and stuff like that present their story in a better way. If we're calling people out, I just want people to know that Tom picked a switch up. <laughs> and put on a motorcycle helmet and Preston's taking care of errands. Yeah, I, can't, I can't see Tom. It's fine. I don't... Um, but this game is also on my list. I, it's pretty high on my list. Uh, I had a great time with this game. I love the characters. I think the world that they built in that universe is super interesting. And the journey that you get to take with these characters over like a 50 hour session, uh, like to get to the story was um, fun. And it changed up enough throughout like the second half that I had, it kept me interested because like it was like oh where is this fucking thing gonna go and I think that was one of my favorite parts was like figuring out that mystery and um oh, uncovering so these relationships with these characters and watching them evolve and it is that anime JRPG bullshit that I fucking love of like hey here's your crew let's see what happens we're gonna put you all together and then you know, it's like find out when seven people start <laughs> getting real. It's like the real right. world of fucking right. RPG. Like, yeah, um, another thing for me is like figuring out where the story is going. This story in this game does hit a crap ton of the story beats of Tales of Symphonia for me. So it was not very unpredictable. Like by the the last like fourth or whatever the fuck I have to play through might get me a little bit more interested like this game was jumping from like number three to number six for me it's just like as i argued with myself other games jumped up above it that's all like there's yeah. definitely a part of me that feels like i could get to the like halfway through next year and be like oh yeah it probably should have been higher up maybe but like there's definitely some stuff to it that grinded me to a halt and I have not played it because other stuff's been dropping and keeping my attention better. Yeah, this game's also on my list. I'll say the core premise of it shares a lot in common with Symphonia, but I think the story differentiates itself pretty well and the characters are certainly 
drastically different than the characters in Tales of Symphonia, and I appreciate it uh, for what it is. And I think other than maybe Grace's F, which I, I, we play together, Genetics, and I absolutely love that game, uh, this probably has the best combat. I'm like, there's two things I'm sad about with this game. One is that there is no uh, co-op. Uh, like, obviously, with the way they redid the battle system, it would be very hard to integrate co-op. It would have to be online co-op. Uh, and that would probably was just too much stress on the team to implement. But hopefully they bring that back because I do like playing these games co-op. Uh, and the other is like there is a very bad difficulty spike very late in the game that kind of blows. But uh, other than that, the yeah. pacing I think is really good. And I like even though the economy is kind of really jank, I think it adds tension to the early encounters. Uh, oh, 100%. That I enjoyed. Uh, and, and I really like I love this game's story. I love that it takes a really crazy weird shift like about two thirds of the game has some really bizarre plot twists near the end that I loved. And I know pissed a lot of people off and they're like, Oh, I, I just don't like the game anymore because of these end game plot twists. And I get it, but it's super, it's super JRPG weird shit. And I liked it. Right. Like, yeah, I know I still I need agree. to play it more to get to those points. I just haven't felt the urge to, because to me, it felt like, <clears throat> Alfin and Shion to me are the weakest characters. I I'm, I like them a lot, but they're the weakest in the bunch for me. And so you hit a certain point where they're now the focus, obviously. And so and you lose Law, Kisara, and Dohalim as a focus. Like they're still in the party, they're still interacting. It's but it's similar to other Tales games where the main characters obviously have to take the focus. The main narrative has to come to fruition. But unlike other Tales games, those characters don't connect for me as much as those other games' main characters do. So that's probably like the main disconnect whenever I was thinking about it. Because like I like Alfin and Shion, but they kind of aren't as good as the other characters to me. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I'll say I didn't like Shion early on, but her arc is really good. And I liked her by the end of the game a lot. And Alfin. Yeah, I mean, I'm at a point where I'm definitely liking them more, but it's still just like I'd rather have more of Doholim and Kisara and stuff rather than them feeling just like like little cheerleader characters on the side is what it's been feeling like to me. Yeah, I think they closed out, other than maybe Doholim, who has still some stuff in the late game arc, quite a bit of stuff actually. I think they closed out the arcs of Law, Law and the sister. And Kisara. Or the sister, whatever her name no. is. Like Windell or Win Rin she does Rindel? Wind Rindel, I think. Yes. Something Rinwell. Like that. Rinwell. Rinwell. That's it. Okay. Show some Rinwell. Respect. I hardly know her. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Um, another uh, thing about this game that I love is like throughout the world, the world is gorgeous um, and the music is incredible. But you, as you travel the world, you can find these little owls and they give you different uh, like cosmetic items. And you go to the owl yeah. forest where the king and queen of the owls fucking gives you certain gifts if you find enough of the owls throughout the world. It's yeah. You're trying to repopulate the owl population. That's like one of the main parts that started making me like fucking Shion and Alfin a little yes. bit more because they were like translating the conversation they're like you understand them and they're just like no yes, we it's, just it's great. think yeah. we understand them and yeah. it was cool it's really cool character building because they use the arguments that they're pretending the owls are having with each other to have actual arguments with each other but like through a third party uh to make it to like remove yeah. it from themselves which i think is really fun and interesting also all the owls intentionally sound really stupid they like had people in the studio just like say who who for all the owls yeah. voice lines and it's very i heard sounding, that too I and i heard people bitching about it but to me that felt like a cool little quirk like yeah from what i heard they straight up just went up to their development team members and stuff and had them record like their owl, owl voice it's very yeah, funny it's amazing i love it yeah, yeah great game uh all right uh everybody wake up so close Preston. down loop hero uh <laughs> Number seven, press or number six. Sorry, Preston. Number six uh, is going to be the Forgotten City. Hell yes. A couple years, uh, well, this year and a little bit of last year of time loop games, and this one does it uh, heavily involved with a narrative, um, and it actually does it well on like another very short ish game. Um, but there are so many things about this where it starts off like anytime you enter a Skyrim town and it's just, you're going to have to go and talk to everybody. And then the next thing you know, you have closed out this insane, weird storyline of a mystery and wrapped it up within three hours 
very naturally in sort of like a, uh, I don't know, in, in a way that if you want to progress down this sort of path and take this through line all the way to the end, you can, or you could also peel off and do some like side quest stuff that all still pertains to the main story and fleshes out the world. And it all happens within, I finished it in three and a half hours, and but I did get an early stage uh, ending. Mm -hmm. And so, but it it's, you want to go back and you want to finish up those threads and you want to knock out the rest of the story. You want to tie up loose ends because it, the stories are so good and the characters are so interesting and you want to know what their motivation is and what their end goal is and how you can help them to get there or to stop them from get there. You'll see endings of the game early on accident by just messing around and just kind of like, oh, let's see where this ends up taking us. Oh shit, I just fucked up everything. The whole world's collapsing around me. I gotta run. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it loops you back into it. But it is one of those games where, like any good time loop game, knowledge is true progression. Understanding the characters gives you true progression. And it's not about like, it's not all about the like items that you get in between runs and stuff like that. Although those are integral, it is more about understanding what the relationships are and how everyone intertwines. And it works just so damn well in such a good, short, quick package. Yes, uh, I, I love this game. Real quick, Ryan, you're like fading into your blurry background image. I don't know how <laughs> you could oh, be able to fix that. I blur her out. Uh, but uh, like, I am surprised how much I love this game. I sat down to play it because a lot of Me people too. say, hey, this is really good. And uh, it, like, it looks jank because it was originally a Skyrim mod, yep. but it's unbelievable. It's my favorite time loop game of the year, uh, and it's not mm -hmm. even close. But uh, like specifically, there's very smart things that other time loop games don't do, especially like comparing it to 12 minutes, something that got so monotonous is like, OK, I have to do this thing and then this thing and then this thing and then this thing. And then I can try this other thing I wanted to try finally yeah. when the yeah. time comes. But when you come to the town, your, your boy Galerius is standing right there. and You can tell him, hey, a bunch of shit's about to go down. I need you to go deliver this medicine. I need you to deliver this other medicine. I need you to go tell this guy that I know a secret yada yada so on and so forth uh and he'll just go run and do all these things that you've already done so that you yep. don't have to keep redoing the same shit over and over every single loop um, you just get back to the point where you were and you can try new things and experiment that way uh it took me about nine and a half ten hours to uh do everything in the game get the true ending i definitely mm -hmm. recommend getting the true ending it's crazy and i think uh i have heard some people say oh this game's just high school philosophy which maybe i should have taken high school philosophy because i think this game has some really cool <laughs> philosophical questions especially yeah. with the true ending where you're like I, I won't i won't spoil it but they're like the final encounter because this, this game's all about talking the final encounter is about talking and about asking philosophical questions and finding loopholes and stuff like that it's it's incredible it's super super cool and like I guess we haven't said like the core premise of the game is you are in the forgotten city. Anybody who sins in the city uh, will cause the entire city to turn to gold. Yep. Everybody dies and you are trying, you are in a time loop trying to find out who is going to sin, who is sinning and causing everything to go to shit. And you need to stop them from doing that. And individual characters approach that concept of what they call the golden rule in really clever ways of like subverting it in the i didn't really lie to you and here's how i didn't lie to you or i didn't really kill that guy this is really what happened um and they do it in a way that every time you're like thinking you're gonna catch someone and figure out and then realizing oh wait no there is some gray area here that isn't as uh yeah, it's not as like uh, tropey as it could be in a time loop game. They do a lot of things to freshen it up. And yeah, just like you were saying, where you can like walk up to someone that you've had a conversation with and be like, enough with the bullshit. Here's your backstory. I already know who you are. Let's move on. And yeah. you just get to skip a lot of the monotony of right. building up, uh, g going back through the motions. Uh, that is one of the games that I will absolutely, uh, I, I played it last night. It wasn't anywhere near my radar. I had started it up whenever it first came out and realized, oh shit, I'm going to have to walk around the city and talk to everyone. I don't feel like getting that deep into a narrative game. And so I knew I had to go back before this uh, 
this conversation, played it, semi beat it, and then immediately shot up to number six. Uh, and it, I'm sure if I had gone back through it and had the time to get the true ending, it would be way higher. Uh, and I, it'll be something that I go back and play tomorrow. Yeah. Absolutely. I will say, uh, as far as Chris goes, the philosophical stuff, have you watched The Good Place? No, that's on my list you of things I should, should so for sure, because it's super good and it gets into like a whole bunch of questions of like, why is hell overfilling and stuff? And it's because, oh, you ate this chicken sandwich, which is from this company that did this thing. And like, mm -hmm. there's a whole right. bunch what of like Greek philosophy and all sorts of stuff just crammed into like all, I think it's like three or four seasons of it. Mm. It asks a lot of cool questions and shit as far as that goes. So awesome. Um, yeah, Ryan, I don't think you've got time to start it, but uh, I did recommend it. I recommend it highly for you because I know you're super into like philosophy yeah. and shit. Uh, I have downloaded it on Game Pass. I plan on starting it over this coming Christmas weekend. Do it. Cool. Do it. This yeah. has got to be high up there on the 2021 gaming sins that I haven't gotten around to yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're going to turn gold. <laughs> oh no, we're all going to turn gold. Get off the call. Get off the call. Oh no. <laughs> Actually, he lives in a different city. We're fine. <laughs> oh. This study's about to be forgotten. Uh, <laughs> Tom, you're number six. My number six probably would be higher if I played more of it. Uh, but I have Wildermyth at number six. Because uh, 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 it was super fun. Just my list. Just missed playing it. with everyone and discovering my voice acting abilities. Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was super fun. Uh, but yeah, no, it's a like, you know, it's, it's a fun game to just, yep. especially since you can play with so many players co-op yes. and it's not really like super intensive, but it's kind of cool to see where your character is going to go and what's happening to them. You become a crazy bird person, but then kill yourself to save people and then everybody dies anyway. <laughs> and then we don't Things play it again. It. I'm so annoyed <laughs> I found out that was co-op like a month ago. Press I cannot believe it. <laughs> yeah, I want to play so that fun. so. Uh yeah, this is absolutely on my list. Uh this game rocked my world this year in a really strong way. I can't think of another game that a lot of games I will beat and drop in the last year and a half, two years of gaming. There's just so many things to play on my plate. Uh and you know, I beat a campaign of Wildermyth. I was like, okay, I understand what this is about. We played those few co-op campaigns, but I went back and played another like 40 hours on my mm -hmm. own because I love, love, love what Wildermyth's doing. It's so good. As someone who loves D&D, &D, evidenced by my terrible shirt, uh, it, it, it comes across to me as the best D&D-esque video game. Like, nothing... I don't know that a video game in soon future is going to really hit what D&D &D does, but I think Wildermyth comes the closest with, you know, the randomly generated stories. I think yeah. the the way things can happen to your characters and the amount, the plethora of things that can happen to your characters. I have so many stories about my characters that feel like stories I would tell people about my D&D &D characters, right? And that is such a huge compliment to Wildermyth. It's an absolute never uninstall for me because that is a game, and, and the runs are quick enough, especially if you do like a three season or three like chunk run, like you can finish one of those in like four hours. No problem. Uh, combat is straightforward, but feels really rewarding. Uh, the mage class me. is super I've, cool in that game. Unique. Mm -hmm. I re yeah, it's a really interesting way to handle magic. The uh, like tuning yeah, into really? items on the world, you know. Uh, God, I just I adore this game so goddamn much. I'm I'm really glad you have it on your list, Tom. I'm really glad I got to show it to you guys. I'm really glad we got to play what little we did together, Tyler. Mm. You need to. Be less afraid of playing things on your PC so we can play more Wildermyth. My PC's in the office, and I don't like being in my office. But <laughs> Wildermyth! <laughs> it's, a good, it's a great time. I mean, it barely missed my list. Uh, I just felt like I didn't play enough of it to really you know, warrant that, but uh, it was it's a fantastic time. I don't think I would want to play it by myself, but the playing no, co-op... I, I was... think that's why I kind of have... I tried playing it by myself and it was nowhere near as much fun as it was when we did Wildermyth and Wine and our um, yeah, 24 hour stream. stream. Like, yeah. That was a lot of fun. Just playing it with everybody. It is so incredible. It's yeah. like you get all these crazy different stories every time that you play and 
like being able to like take turns of like oh now like Tom and I's character is going to go do this thing and we have like this little side story going on and then okay now Ryan and Chris's character are going to go do their thing and then we're all going to get back together and do this thing mm-hmm. and uh, I think the combat is good I love tactical combat I think it's great and it it does enough stuff with the enemy variety like quickly as far as like changing up um like their abilities and introducing new ones and yeah. um and then they get what they change like berserk or some fucking form and yeah well they get tons of different things you know there's all these different cards yeah. that get drawn that increase enemy difficulty after the end of each yeah. fight after the each like season and it's constantly changing up how you have to approach these battles in the same way with the story itself and uh, it's super fun uh, how you have to constantly adapt to what the game is throwing at you and it puts you into just some like really fun different scenarios and i love how and i hate also at the same time which is another ding against it but it is an interesting concept is every scenario is written by somebody and they like have the yeah. author's mm-hmm. name up there of like who wrote that scenario and um i think that's really cool but also some of those scenarios are trash <laughs> so, <laughs> i think a lot of them are kind of basic so that they can fit into whatever yeah. has been However happening on any yeah. yeah i i don't think it's like the best writing we're gonna find in 2021 but the way that they put everything together into the experience just mm-hmm. it feels like a curated world which is what D D feels like whenever you're a player you know it feels like you're playing in a curated world and and like that's how wildermyth comes across to me and i just uh i do it. honestly preston i need to give you so many thanks because I heard about this game first in the Draft Punks Discord from yeah. uh, Yag Koodle, but then I saw your stream of it on uh, Indie Tail, and that's when I was like, "Oh, I have to get this. This isn't yeah. like a keep my eye on it. Like I need to buy it right now." It was the the way that that game. I I only played two campaigns, but again, knowing that it's co op makes me want to dive right back in because I know it would be. I enjoyed the hell out of it. And now knowing that I can go back in with other people makes me just even more amped to play more of it. But like the level, the power of scaling in that game is so incredible from as again, as the D&D aspect of you start off as this kind of nobody just making your way and barely scraping by. And by the end of it, you're just like this deity that's rolling over uh, and some enemies. I mean, you're still getting uh, good fights. And then to have that kind of progress as a legendary character later on that you can come back to in this legacy characters that you can use later, like they did so many things right. And these are things that don't exist in other games like, uh, oh my gosh, Divinity and Baldur's Gate and these other great, fantastic CRPGs that can't hold a candle to the, what is that divergent gameplay that this is able to offer emergent uh that emergent gameplay that in stories that this has you can't find that in many other places uh yeah and And it's just okay i i've been on the discord they're regularly updating and adding more stories Mm -hmm. to their random story generator um and i think for me like one of the things it offers as a plus over stuff like Baldur's gate and divinity which i also enjoy the hell out of is its shorter runtime you know it's a lot easier get a group of four or five friends together to play a game over a couple of weekends than it is over two dozen weekends, you know, with something like Divinity. Uh, so the fact that it's more contained in the the story it's trying to tell, which I think serves it well based on the more segmented-ish way it kind of tells a story. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, it just, they, they knew what they were building, they built it around it, and they did such a good job. It It feels so good to play. Preston, I'm going to be pinging you. We will play this co-op. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> want to jump on. We'll definitely have to do some. Uh, yeah, this game missed my list by a little bit, but I did enjoy what we played a lot. And it's just the, I think the main reason it's better in co-op is because there's only three classes, at least right now. And like having one or two characters that are different classes, you feel like you're constantly doing something different. If you're playing solo, you end up like you've got two warriors and two rogues and two mages and you're trying yeah. to build them in different ways just to get a little more variety. But if you're just controlling two characters, like you get a lot of variety and you're talking to your friends about the weird, dumb shit that's happening, and you're just like, hey, I'm going to just go run in the middle of those guys, because why not, uh, and see what happens. And your friends are like, no, what are you fucking doing, you idiot? <laughs> uh, and then you just kill them all anyway, and you become a god. 
It's great. Mm -hmm. or, uh, or you kill yourself and sacrifice yourself, and then everybody yeah. dies after you anyway. So, just to just to say more things good about a game I adore. Uh, I do think even within those three classes we have, there's a lot of build variety. You know, yeah. you can like your warriors. You can really build for more uh, just classic tankiness or more outright power. Your uh, spellcasters have a lot of different variability with what kind of spells they focus on and how those are utilized in battle. Like it's a very straightforward battle system. Like you're going to be able to win every battle really your first time through. But the more and more you play, the more invested you become in the battle system, the more interesting combinations you can find. Some of my favorite spell combinations, like I didn't find until my fifth or sixth run. Like there's there's a lot of depth to the combat as well. Yeah. Good game. Game. Mm -hmm. Good uh, that was your number six, right, Preston? Mine. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I, I... That was on my list, but yeah. okay. Still coming. <laughs> All right, number six, Ryan. My number six, uh, we already talked about Forza Horizon 5. Great game. Really? I was expecting that to be higher. Oh, there's the top five is so hotly contended for me this year. Yeah. Like, I, oh. <laughs> All right, uh, Tyler, you're number six. Uh, my number six is uh, Garden Story, which is a little indie game where you play just as a great in Concord. What? Did you say it just didn't make mine because I didn't have enough time in it, but yeah. I was enjoying I that game. Seen that one. It's a great game. Um, I don't I like it, I'm so I'll one. say nothing. Yeah, I think I'm the only person that's. Beat Chris it hates grapes. Here. Yeah, he hates <laughs> grapes. Okay, he, so. he hates cute nature. Uh, but no, it was just like a really perfect switch game for me at night for a good two and a half, three weeks. I got very invested in it. It's got a very easy loop of uh, just going around, gathering resources, doing little odds and end jobs around these different areas. Uh, to kind of progress the story i think the ending is really good and touching and like just has like a an odd take um again, it's not necessarily an odd take but uh, an out of place take for that game of like death and what it means to live your life which i was not expecting and uh it I, it was actually kind of emotional at the end for me and like how it, it kind of coalesces into like just subverting your expectations um from just a little game about being a grape and living in this world. It's fucking weird. It's a weird game. <laughs> but I loved every aspect of it because just like you, it's a, it's a day night on cycle. It's definitely my radar of a game it's, to play at some point. But you're just doing like these like little odds and end things. Like there's community centers that you can fill out. You collect all the different items within the community center and like take it to the community center. Um, and like it, you don't really necessarily get anything from it. Um, <laughs> it's just like a way of getting different. Um, cards like right? items. You get the, yeah yeah you get different items that you can like build out these towns but like you don't really have a lot of plots that you can put stuff in and that's where it gets a little messy um but the combat is like very straightforward you you it's like zelda side scrolling combat um but one of the things that i think is really unique and interesting is like you can unlock memories from doing different things and these memories like are from all of the other characters in the game kind of and they give you different buffs, so you can add these buffs to your character and uh, really tailor the game to how you want to play. So, like, you can add buffs that give you more items when you're harvesting or give you more stamina so you can do more swings with your weapons or anything, really. Um, it was just a really relaxing game, you know? I didn't have to put a lot of thought into it. And, uh, yeah, it was surprising. It was my number yeah. one for a very long time. Um, Oh. I think the first time I tried to play it, I fell off really quick and then I played it like a month later and I got more into it um, and I actually played it for a long time. I only made it to. Is it the beach town that's right underneath you? So it's only like the second yeah. town. Yeah, it's only the second um, area. So there's like four but, biomes in the game. Yeah, I just have not had time, but I I did enjoy what I played after I got back into it. Um, but I did have that initial fall off. I was just like, eh, am I really going to play this? And then I just started playing it at night. Like you said that you were doing, I just play it for like 45 minutes or an yeah. hour. And uh, those little tidbits just of playing it. It was a, it was a nice, just kind of relax and play this game. Even though it's fighting, it's not like intensive or like, Oh God, now I lost all this shit or, you know, yep. It's a good game. I liked it. Still want to play more of it and beat it. Cool. Yeah, I think I think uh, if you don't want to play it, you should definitely look up the ending. I, I think it's really it's cool and touching. And uh, yeah, Chris, 
has oddly heavy themes for what that game is setting in front of you. Um, yeah. Number six. I'm glad you love it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> How so passive aggressive. It was like, it was very glad passive. you love it. I fucking uh, hate it. I, I couldn't do it. I'm sorry. Uh, number six on my list is I know also on Ryan's list uh, Inscription. Fucking love this game. Oh, fuck yes. Uh, this I'm is... glad that you love this one. Yeah. yeah you well, you it. haven't even played it. I don't know. Oh, good job, Chris. Yeah, exactly. I played four hours of Garden yeah. Story and it's trash there. I said it. No, shut up. <laughs> it's not. It's fine. Um, Inscription is a card game where you are playing against this uh, weird enigma that you don't really understand in this weird cabin that you're exploring and solving puzzles and doing weird stuff and crazier shit happens beyond that yeah. that we won't talk about because uh, it's all very spoiler this is a game you do not want spoiled for you we did a spoiler cast if you have played it a uh, spoiler cast if you will uh that we put on youtube you should listen to that it's very good with me ryan travis and uh he was Marvel. on for the first part Marvel. sorry um yeah. But yeah, like ju just this part alone that we're talking about, super cool. Like the the mechanics of the card game are very unique and interesting. Every turn you draw a card, but you can either draw like basically a sacrificial squirrel that you can sacrifice for other things or like a normal card. It feels very Yu-Gi-Oh in the way it works, more so than any other roguelike card game that I played because you like you, you play minions and then you sacrifice them for other minions. It's very like, hey, this this uh, monster in Yu-Gi-Oh requires two sacrifices, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and just it's hard to talk about but there's a lot of crazy yeah. bizarre shits that happens in this game that uh you, you're gonna want to play it for yourself and see yeah it's uh it's definitely very hard to talk about i'm gonna be talking around it much like chris did uh i i i definitely see the Yu -Gi Oh connection but there's a lot of similarities for me to magic the gathering i think in the way that they keep the numbers small and the way a lot of the cards work feels like magic the gathering to me although i absolutely i can't deny that the sacrificing mechanic is very Yu-Gi-Oh inspired um i chris i'm glad both you and i are ones talking about this game because i'm one who's bounced off of a lot of card based video games and you're one who likes a lot of card based video games card -based we both games. Yeah, we both I love this game general, like that's why i looked at it and i felt like i want to play it but then i saw uh Co Carnage said he loved the first part, and then it hits a point where it dropped him off a little bit, and he wasn't mm. sure if he was going to continue. So I was like, I don't know if I want no, to jump into. I think it's. In it. I think it's absolutely worth it. Uh, I, it definitely there's some twists and turns throughout. We're really going to be talking around this game tonight. There's yeah. not going to be a lot said because we want to talk around it, not about I, it. I will say I have heard from a lot of people that same thing that Co said of like when the game takes its first turn. Uh, they drop off. I think the story gets really interesting at that first turn, enough so that it, it carries it through. But I, I get it. Yeah. Um, so I heard for... that, and I was like, I don't really. I'll get to it at some point if it pops yeah. up on Steam for like way cheaper or something. For for me, that first turn is my favorite part of the game. Like that that chunk of gameplay is my my like I love that bit so much. Uh, I know there are other people that you know love turns that happen later in that game uh i do think the first turn you know the first section of that game which uh there's a demo for this game on steam like if you're at all interested definitely check that demo out and if that demo clicks in your head please just buy the game just it is beyond worth your time i it's 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 what twenty dollars chris I think it's $20, and uh, if you have not bought anything with your coupon on Epic Game Store, you can use that and get it for $10. Yeah, uh, it is worth every penny. It is so good. So good. Just, mwah. Mwah. Yeah, <laughs> most of the criticisms I have heard for the game is either, like, people don't like after that first turn, uh, which, you know, if you don't like it, you don't like it. That is what it is. And also, I've heard that uh, the developer, Daniel Mullins, has done similar things in his past games in terms of like subverting expectations but uh i haven't played his past games so for me it was fresh it was new maybe it's like the ration clank thing where if you played his past games this one's not as great but yeah it could be this is also my first daniel mullins game so but yeah I, I i adore what they do here i think the the card game itself is extremely satisfying feels very good to get good at that card game and it's not exceptionally difficult to get good at um, and there's multiple different play styles to approach your, uh, you know, 
what, what the way you like to play it's it's very good yeah something that travis said a lot during our discussion is like the game wants you to win unlike other some other roguelike card games like a slay the spire or monster training i'd say monster Training kind of wants you to win you can get very op in that game pretty easily but slay the spire like is a good comparison point and slay the spire is very hard can really crush you if you're not building perfectly this game really wants you to win it's pretty easy to make your deck super op after a couple runs that's really good to know i was i've been worried about that specifically going into it is because i playing slay the spire i just got more frustrated than anything um so knowing that like it makes me want to jump into it even sooner makes me want to go back and play more monster train monster train's really good <laughs> yeah, a good game no it was on my goatee last year <laughs> hell yeah uh all right number we'll be on five genetics Okay, I'm pretty sure it came out this year. Uh, Monster Hunter Rise did, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, it was like January, right? <laughs> I think it was or, March. March. Yeah, it, was early yeah, yeah. Yeah. it feels like it was so freaking long yeah. ago, though. <laughs> a year and a half ago, basically. <laughs> like, I really liked the combat from it. It's uh, probably the best in the series, in my opinion, which I've been with Monster Hunter for, like, eons now. Um it took all of the good stuff from world and then just fleshed it out even more and kind of tried to return to form a little bit more because worlds feels it's like it's kind of dumbed down monster hunter at times but um and then like the wire bugs are just like the coolest freaking thing to add to a video game like ever pretty much it added so much mobility and like variety to it it just feels like monster hunter but with like a fresh coat of paint and i'm like looking forward to it coming out on PC and seeing what people can do modding wise and how it looks on PCs and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Oh, sorry. The, the, the dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I enjoyed what I played in monster Hunter rise. I got through like the story and played a little bit beyond that, but I didn't do like everything in the game. Like I wanted to do and did most of it in monster hunter worlds. Uh, I think it's, it, you know, it's shallow, but it's hard for me to get over the very big visual downgrade from right. Monster Hunter Worlds. I do think the wire That's bucks super like cool. The new move sets you get out of that are super cool, but uh, I still prefer Monster Hunter World. Yeah. I as well. Um, also, mainly because it's on the fucking Switch and I cannot play yeah, the I... Switch for longer than like 45 minutes. And it's like, yeah, that's basically me too. That's what I was legitimately saying with Metroid Dread overall too. It's like, mm -hmm. I am not on board for the Switch as much as I used to be. Like, because I'm at home on most of the time. So it's like, <laughs> why not just play on the Xbox or PC, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did enjoy yeah. what I played, but yeah, I, think oh, yeah. I, I mean, still prefer World fun. over Rise. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I have... Then I, I have the Monster Hunter that. Rise Switch. Like I literally bought that one. Right. <laughs> like I like I like them both for their own things overall. Like yeah. the main thing for me was like worlds just look so freaking good that it's mm -hmm. it's hard to yeah. stomach. The food looks so in. much better in World. It's yeah. Oh yeah. Delicious. Than the gummy <laughs> whatever you're making. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care. Bunny Donald. Right? Yeah. Bunny Donald. Yeah. yeah. All right uh preston number five wildermyth number five hell yeah good choice <laughs> tom number five uh sword of the necromancer which i can't believe that none of you have played um especially while chris you played archvale and Tyler, you played archvale so this has very similar archvale like vibes to it and you have the same dash like mechanic you know you have so, several of those um different weapons not maybe as broad of a spectrum for the weapons uh but the whole story is um you're like a rogue play a female oh what's her name toma Tom? That's what her name is. Just kidding. toma toma yes um so you're like this rogue and it, the way it tells the story is as you progress through this dungeon you get little flashbacks about what was happening so basically you're a rogue and you end up finding this princess just like running around she's escaping her like kingdom or whatever but she can't do anything so you be essentially become her bodyguard and then become lovers and so you have this story of these two female characters becoming lovers and she ends up dying 
So you find the sword of the necromancer and this whole thing is you're going through this dungeon trying to bring her back. So you have four like little spots as you're running through these dungeons to have weapons, um, spell books. Uh, but the cool thing about this is after you kill an enemy in one of these spots, you can raise them from the dead and they will fight for you. Uh, so you can actually level them up after you beat a boss. You can put them. It gives you the option of continuing on through the dungeon or um, going back home. And then you can put stuff in your treasure chest to save it for later. So it's a, like an RPG roguelike uh, as you progress. I think there's five levels in total. Each one can have like 10 different random rooms. Uh, but it's a super. I like the story. Um, it's a fun gameplay like. I know you guys liked Archvale. It's very it's not like as expansive as that. Like this came out in January. So I think Archvale obviously like built more on to what they did. But I don't know because you, you can collect monsters, basically level them up and have them fight for you instead of having a weapon on. You have so many slots in your backpacks that you can put these in and save them for later. Um, you level up as you go through. So as you level up, you get more hearts. So you have more life when you die, you lose a certain amount of experience. So you kind of backtrack a little bit. So it's like a give and take. But uh, yeah, the end goal is to unlock the full power of the sword and bring your this lover back. Cool. This is a super fun game. It's fifty uh, percent uh, off on Steam right now. I don't know if it's on anything else. If it's also on sale, but I'll probably pick it uh, up. It's on Switch. I have it on Switch. Uh, mm, that sounds like a good place to play it. That is very Zelda, Zelda-like combat, right? Whenever you are actually in the dungeons, like there, is it formed like uh, older Zelda games? Uh, for the most part, yeah. I mean, you still have to attack. Like it's not like the old old ones where you just kind of like run into them. <laughs> yeah, it's, so yeah, it's so more to... Zelda than you'd say like a dual a dual stick shooter like Archvale. It's more melee based, I guess. Oh yeah. The question? Yes. Okay. I mean, oh, okay. but you can get um, there are spell books that let you have spells, there's spears, there's axes like so that it's the same similar like structure around how that is. The aiming system isn't the same. Like you don't have the reticle that you could spin around. Yeah. Okay. Um, like Archvale is. But yeah, it's more Zelda esque. Cool. But yeah, I don't know. It's a fun game if you haven't get get it it's yeah it's it, lo time. it looks cool every time i hear the name it's i just think of the opening it. that's super cool <laughs> uh yeah the song was also really good from it um yep uh every time i hear the name i just think of crypt of the necro dancer which is also a game mm -hmm. i like but i, I just, just like the two are intrinsically connected to my mind so i'm like oh i played that no i have not uh all right uh we are on number five for ryan all right so the top five of my list gets really spicy uh all of these games really threw me back in my seat in a special way, whether it was pausing the game and thinking about what happened or not wanting to put the controller down for as long as physically possible. <clears throat> uh, this is a game I'm sure is on others lists here, but uh, we're going to talk about it now. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep, it's on uh, my list. Oh, yeah. It's on my, it would be on my list <laughs> if I had played it. I uh, uh, wanted to get it at one point in time. It went on sale several times for like $30 very quickly, but I threw yeah. it on Christmas list to a bunch of people. So I, mm. it, I haven't gotten it yet. Yeah. I got it on um, black Friday sale on steam and I yep. agree wholeheartedly with uh, Tyler here quoted multiple times as saying better than it has any right to be. Yep. This yeah. game I've hits been, uh, so hard. The combat feels way better than anything they showed us. Controlling the full team of the Guardians feels really good from the perspective of Star-Lord. The story blew me out of my socks. The socks gone. Just gone. I need to buy new socks, all right? It's so <laughs> it's so good. It's I really I did not expect to enjoy the game anywhere near as much as I did mm -hmm. based off the preview coverage. I, it's it's one of those things where it's just it's worth experiencing yourself so i don't want to talk too deeply about exactly what went on but it, it feels really good to play it makes you feel things in a really good way it makes you connect with these characters that you already know a lot of, for the most part we've all seen at least one of the movies well, that's uh, also one of the things i really like about this is it so the mcu did a really good job about telling you what these characters basically are i like how this game goes more into the characters mm -hmm it has a lot more time to like build and mm -hmm. like yeah you don't like you're basically how batista pl uh, plays drax you just like he's got this very like 
wooden kind of form and he's you know his humor is just like kind of all over the place this really gives him more like intellectual like you're like i like mm-hmm. when you go in there and he's just got glasses on reading a book um and you have really good conversations with him like really deep meaningful conversations where just from the mcu watching the movies you wouldn't really think that that's something that would come from him right. and i think he is probably the biggest surprise in conversation wise um yeah. i haven't beaten it yet like i just haven't had time uh, it is still on my list because it does have such a great impact um but uh, character wise i i feel like he was the biggest or the best like takeaway from that as a character on his own but they did very very well with all of the characters and the music is fantastic not just the music they licensed for but the actual star lord band music so good very good talked about it in our modi but i was like confusing my coworkers who grew up with music from that era like who who did this this feels like something that was on the radio when we were like oh, yeah this is it's yeah. very like it could be docking it could be like a mix of Def Leppard and like fucking winger like it's very 80s mm-hmm. and, yeah, and just the fact that you start off as Star Lord as a kid and he's got the fucking sweetest mullet you've ever seen in your goddamn <laughs> life <laughs> uh yeah this is number 1 on my list uh and as spoiler a, um, <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean just, uh, the this is the biggest surprise for me, just like Ryan was saying, where going into it, I was like, it'll be OK, it'll be fine. And then all the reviews came out and I was like, they're all lying. It's not as good as everyone says it is. I don't believe you. I'm not buying this game. And I fought the FOMO until it was on sale. Got it. And just burned through it immediately. Could not put it down. And there's something like the music is fantastic. It is by far my favorite Guardians thing uh, out of the three, right? And having that time with all the different characters did flesh them out. You're absolutely right. Drax is the standout. One thing my main detractor is Star Lord himself is kind of obnoxious and whiny at the beginning. And I know that's sort of his character, but the way that he constantly is just like, come on rocket (laughs) and he just says that line like a thousand times in this game um but that's the only thing that i walked away from like annoyed with the combat itself feels really good and it's never difficult uh but you can for me what i would do was just try to beat the enemies faster like how quickly could i just burn through an encounter and that was where I would find the complexities within the combat was, okay, what combinations can I do to just wreck everybody? Um, and it, it leans itself in that direction really well. It makes it really fun. Like, and the world backgrounds, like the skyboxes and the level design is spectacular. It is the, the the way the worlds look is the way that I wanted No Man's Sky to look whenever it first was supposed to drop that like really the what is it the silver area or the golden era of sci-fi uh, mm-hmm. where it's just that 1950s aesthetic of insane who thought this up sort of world design it's so good is your dog okay Tyler I don't know man it's not <laughs> shaking it's being annoying. <laughs> She uh, had a sweater on, and now the sweater is off, so she's just like... You see her rolling around on the ground back there. Yeah, <laughs> she really she really wanted that off. <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this is one that, like, this is one of the five or so. Oh, my gosh. This is one of the five or so that were in contention to, like, barely get on the list. It barely didn't make my list. I, I like it a lot. I really like the story that they told. Like you guys said, it has it's way better than it has any right to be, for sure. Uh, especially... I think I had a really, really bad showing at E3. It, it looked pretty terrible. Uh, I, like the combat didn't really click for me ever. I think it was it was okay. It was a means to an end, but it never it wasn't like great for me. But I, I can totally see how people can get super into it and love it a lot. And like, there's one moment really late in the game of character writing that I thought was just very sudden and odd and didn't really work for me. And it was a very big important character moment that just didn't land at all. That uh, detracted a little bit from the experience, but. I think i know exactly what you're talking about but yes i want to i really want to ask you after we're done recording <laughs> <laughs> i want to know 
Uh, and I know Tyler also played that and probably has things to say about it. I guess we'll let him say him later when he uh, mentions on his list because he disappeared. Uh, although, wait, isn't he up next? Oh, crap, Tyler. Oh, <laughs> well. Okay. I think he has the next one, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just assume his game is something we never played. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, here he comes. Oh, thank God. I'm sure it's some indie game that. Tyler, you have anything to say about Guardians before we move on? Uh, yeah, it's uh, the best writing in any game this year for me, personally. Mm. Um, I didn't play The Forgotten City, so I don't know about that. <laughs> but uh, every character is super well developed, and every interaction that you have with them is amazing. It's legitimately a funny game. It made me laugh out loud mm -hmm. multiple times. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of great reoccurring gags with a fridge, and I think that stuff is great, and it never loses its luster the entire time. And it actually going. has a great payoff, too, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Um there are so many cool interactions with other characters in that game, and it's just so goofy and uh, different than anything else that I've played this year. Um, it's got some really cool set pieces, and you get to do some really cool things with other Marvel characters that I wasn't expecting to see in that game. Um, uh, let's see. Combat is great. I mean, we already talked about that. Uh, music is great. Um, and as I was quoted earlier... It has no right to be as good as it is. Mm -hmm. It's fucking crazy. It's a good game. Yeah, I think and the only only gripe I have with it is the walking conversations that all of a sudden you hit the gateway and it fucking just stops. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, that does shit. Happen like, so much. I don't want to just stop and just listen. Like I do, I but do I don't, like I'm just walk time. like a lot of it's like while you're walking, like some stuff they have timed out perfectly. Like they're actually like scenarios where the conversation only happens while you're from here to here and you're walking that way and they know that you know that's as long as it'll take you so you get the whole thing but then there's other parts where you just enter this area and if you're running around or you pop your visor up you may miss something or it'll skip something and you could lose it um and but they that's have really so much of it that they don't like they, a lot of games will come back after an encounter and be like what what were we saying and then like oh, go yeah. back. and yep. this doesn't have anything like that where it yeah. just sort of continues i yeah. think like the great Scorsese said, uh, video game, Marvel video games are not art. They're just thrill rides. Um, and <laughs> this is exactly like, like this is stupid Scorsese. <laughs> this is a fantastic. I hated like, that so much. I know. There's, there's not, there is depth to the narrative and depth to the characters, but to the game itself, there isn't a whole lot of depth. Um, it's, it really, you kind of coast through it and up to see the narrative through. Right. But, yeah, it's good and it's fun and it's just like it's a solid you're gonna get from point a to point b and you're gonna finish this game because it is so smooth in the yeah. way that it just pushes you through that narrative and it came out of nowhere they literally yeah. announced it like at e3 and like what three months later it was out like yeah. there was no, no mention That's true. of this game before e3 this year and all of a sudden it was just hey here's a guardians of the galaxy guess what it's fucking out in like three months it's I think we would get a lot more recognition for that surprise reveal if the surprise reveal had been good, because yeah. that is I mean, a really I was, impressive I was thing. When I saw done. it, just I because mean, of yeah. the music, I saw <laughs> yeah. the gameplay and everything, and it looked fine for the most part. I think it's just that face value. You see it, and there's too many comparisons to draw to the Avengers game. Yeah, like I think that was a big the, thing. They didn't try to sell the narrative or the unique gameplay aspects yeah. that the game has as compared to Avengers. They marketed it showing off the stuff that looks like the avengers game which got a pretty bad rap i think it's like okay it's the well, that single player i thought the single yeah. player for the avengers was great right like, it's the life and then i just stopped part, after like, i beat the campaign yep yeah so it's like marketing it towards that game that got like fives and sixes and nobody talks about the campaign was actually pretty good deters people from thinking oh guardians mm -hmm. of the galaxy is actually a good game or whatever yeah, what was Square Enix's first attempt at Marvel, people did not, by and large, like. So when they said, we're taking another stab at Marvel, it's like, oh, well, you already failed at that. But now, I think now when they reveal another Marvel project, be, people will be more positive, even if it looks like Avengers or whatever, you know, like this game did at launch or at its uh, trailers. Uh, all right, number five, Tyler. My number five was brought up by Tom a minute ago, Archvale. Um, I just played this game here within the last few weeks. Um, it is a 
top down bullet hell uh crafting fucking zelda game i don't even know how to like to describe it it's so unique uh, where you're going around and you're trying to fight off these different undying bosses throughout this world and it's all like bullet hell and you have different kinds of melee weapons and they all have a different range attack to them but you then you can there's crafting elements so as you're going around you're picking up different elements that you can craft new weapons and gear and it's just constantly going around and uh trying to get to the next area it's like a grid based map you know the, just like old school style zelda games where it's like a grid based and you're just like going from one square to the next to the next to the next to the next and there's always something in each square whether it's uh enemy encounters or a chest with some gear in it or there are these um hyper dot teleport- challenges yeah there are teleportation <laughs> stones that take you into these areas that are basically just like uh tiny versions of like games in hyperdot where like there are certain levels in hyperdot where you have to go and collect an orb if you haven't played hyperdot mm-hmm. um, <laughs> the geometric uh what dodge everything game right mm-hmm. that's what charles calls it um and you have to go around and collect these different orbs and it's just like a constant challenge where you have like three different difficulties and it gets harder and harder and harder and you're getting these badges because you can equip badges in the game that give you different buffs so you can really tailor how you play the game um, to suit your needs Um, there's all kinds of different towns throughout the game and as you find towns they incorporate new items that uh, go into other towns so it's basically like one unit but you're slowly expanding that unit throughout each area as she said Um, thank you (laughs) <laughs> and so, like, you go to a town and you have a bank and you can only hold a thousand coins. You go to the next town, you can hold two thousand, and it just slowly stacks on itself. And uh, it, it, all your money is kind of held in one area. And I just everything about this game, it all fucking flows and works together in such a great, unique way. And the combat is so fucking good. I love yeah, it. It's got that frustration level where when you beat it, it's like that Dark Souls where you're like, I yes. fucking finally did it. Like, there's the like, it's not like, God like, damn it. It's like, you know it's you fucking up like right. it's not and the game the cheating you. Is for real like there are so many times where like you're in the middle of it and things are flying all over the place and like the enemy designs are all super unique and different and the patterns that they shoot out their uh, bullets and like there's combinations of like melee attacks that turn into bullet attacks where like an enemy will run across the screen and they'll hit the wall but then when they hit the wall an explosion of bullets will come and like there will be 10 or 12 different enemies in that room basically and you're trying to figure out where their attacks are coming from and what fucking pattern they are using and uh when it you get into this rhythm and you're just flowing through these uh different rooms and like fighting these enemies and it feels so fucking good so good and the bosses are all super fun and unique and challenging and like legitimately make you have to focus in and zone on in on what you're doing and i just haven't been challenged like that in a game in a very long time since like probably the first time i played dark souls um i mean it's just it's super fun and engaging still bag of knives is my go-to weapon i know you guys are talking <laughs> about other ones but bag like it's literally a bag of knives that's the weapon. and it's fucking and, it's you, awesome. and you just take and there and there's badges that you can <laughs> equip that make those bags yeah. of knives even better i mean i know i think right now i freeze and poison enemies um but i don't have many of the badges yet but there is a lot of badges that you can get that like they are the basic ones where you can get a melee one that boosts your melee. There's a ranged one. There's a spell casting one. And some of those spell casting ones get pretty freaking like ridiculous. Like yeah. the wands and stuff that you get. Yeah. yeah. And so, so the, a lot of the late game stuff, super bonkers. Uh, I also, I beat this game. I liked it a lot. I'm glad Tyler recommended it to me because I definitely want to check that out. Otherwise, uh, it's like it has such a smooth progression that uh, makes you want to keep playing. Like just the, the progression of power over the course of the game uh, like you have these little like leapfrog moments where it's like, oh my god, I just became so much more powerful with this new weapon I found, this new recipe I fa- I discovered and crafted, uh, and yeah. then you like kick ass in a zone, and then you get to a new zone, and you're getting your ass kicked again, but you find another yeah. new recipe, and you make another new weapon, and it has this great progression until near the end of the game. I think like before the second to last or third to last zone, I like discovered a really broken build and then you're just god and you murder everything and that's also super fun after the game yeah. has been such a struggle so uh i like it a lot too didn't yeah, make it yeah. in the top 10 but super fun and one of the things i also like is the way that the story is presented so like 
there was an old king who ruled over this land, basically, and uh, you're finding out the story of this king and what he did to this land and who the undying are. Like, every time you beat a boss, there is a character who is slowly, like, unfolding this story in front of you, and the whole goal of the game is to get these arch stones to create the arch veil, which is a land that you're basically trying to, like, Moses these fucking people through. And, uh, it's just man, it's it's really good. I I can't describe the it more than how satisfying the combat is. The combat <laughs> is so fun and frustrating, and frustrating, but in a good way. It's like one of those things where it's like I know if I would have just done this at this second, mm-hmm. it, or it's I, like or you I, know, like as soon as you move down and you get hit, you're like, why the fuck yeah. did I do that? <laughs> yes, yeah. and it's not like a it's not like a one hit kill either. It's like you uh, slowly collect hearts and upgrade your health over time and. <laughs> can upgrade um like your flasks basically mm. that give and you defense. your health back yep. and uh yeah it just it's great there are so many perks to this game i mean you, what however you want to play it you can play it and it's great i played play naked most bit. of the time <laughs> <laughs> i've played it a little bit and uh the bullet hell type of formula tends to lend itself into the same aspect as rhythm games where like in guitar hero you fuck up one note and then you fuck up the next note and the yes. next <laughs> note and the next note. So like you're sitting there playing and you're in a perfect rhythm of dodging shit and everything. And then like you get hit by one thing. You're like, God, I'm so fucking. And then you like move to try and get out of it or whatever else. And then you're yes. getting hit by the next thing until you like slowly catch yourself. And then you're back in the rhythm again. So yep. that's and, basically and it, and, it. And that happens a lot in this game. And there are. Oh, yeah. Like so... even towards the beginning, you're you're dying to shit that you're like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and there are so many of those moments where you're like man i'm just absolute shit at this game and then other moments where like i am the fucking god of yeah. this game <laughs> yes. and uh like at the, especially at the end as chris was saying like if you get a certain weapon and upgrade it all the way and you are just slaughtering and uh yeah man, and it it's not good. it's not one specific weapon like i found at least four weapons that were ridiculously oh. broken if i changed my belt around yeah yeah super cool uh yeah. and it, oh and imagine just great. sorry fuck brought me music is amazing music's good back to like strikers 1945 or whatever the fuck that game is we were playing at tappers the top down shooter like oh yeah shooters where you're yeah, dodging yeah. shit except there's no fucking wipe the bullets move <laughs> yep. uh all right my number five we already talked about the forgotten city uh, uh genetics your number four my number four is uh, Ruined King, a League of Legends story. Uh, it has really fun combat overall that takes some base inspirations from League and throws it in there to make its own little turn-based combat system. Um, the characters are kind of the main part of it that's really fun, and their dynamics between them are great, and they mixed in characters that if you play League, you would not expect them to be mixing with each other, but it just works really well. Um, the story overall is really fun and really great. The my main issue with it is the level design isn't the greatest. It's uh it's a lot of it, it suffers the same issues as like Final Fantasy VII remake and stuff like that, where it's definitely like the level's more of just a motor to get you where you need to go, rather than like this super inspired, like interactive, like varied sort of thing. And, like, it definitely has some dungeons that feel akin to, like, the water dungeon in Zelda and stuff, where you're just like, I am so fucking annoyed right now. But, like, once you (laughs) figure it out, it's just like, oh, okay, I was being stupid or not thinking properly or whatever. But, um... Yeah, yeah, it sounds... uh, In terms of that, anyway, it sounds similar to their last game. uh, Yeah. But I don't remember Battle Chasers. Battle Chasers, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, but, um, its base storyline is... I was finding it funny he was talking about the the sword of the necromancer or whatever the heck it was called um Mm -hmm. its base storyline is this king loses his wife he's called the ruined king after the point but he takes her to some blessed isles to put her in the water to try and revive her and then she comes back to life as like this weird demon ghost thing takes a sword stabs him and kills him and then like so he's trapped in the sword and then like eons later um there's like a black mist thing that starts developing off of that occurrence the black mist gets strong enough to make its own entities and they basically free the ruined king so like the whole story is the six members trying to 
solve and stop the harrowing, which is the black mist slowly spreading from happening or whatever. But they have like all sorts of little storylines mixed into it the whole time. Like Alawi and Gangplank used to have a romantic relationship. Miss Fortune, who's another party member, does not like Gangplank because Gangplank killed her mom. And That's a good she reason. got revenge on Gangplank eventually and everything. Alawi and him have broken up, but she still kind of likes him. Alawi and Brahm have always had this interaction in the game where Alawi like likes strong men, so she constantly is oh. just like, ooh, so yeah. So it's a soap we... opera. Yeah, basically. Like <laughs> she makes jokes towards Brahm about like, oh, I like you. Maybe we should go below decks and all this other stuff like that. And then like Sounds like Tyler's prominent. Ari and Thank Yasuo you. come from like the Asian inspired Ionia or whatever, which you don't even expect them to have a connection, but she hired him as a bodyguard and he's in exile. And like all the characters' stories like interact with each other in a way where you would not expect it. And they even managed to put in like this ghostly um Pike. He's like an assassin in the game or whatever. And he's his whole thing is he fell into the ocean and he got resurrected by some magical whale or some shit. And now his whole thing is it's it's legitimately like some magical fish resurrected him. And his whole thing is these voices in his head that tell him oh, here's the next captain you got to kill. They're fucking with the ocean. Go kill them. And so he's uh, like, oh, you're the next on my list or whatever. He's the ocean's hitman. Basically, yeah. <laughs> That's basically his whole shtick. And then, like, Alawi does her whole, like, judging him thing because she's a speaker for her her religion or whatever. And it judges him as worthy. And then, like, he has this whole, like, revelation storyline going on or whatever, which him being judged as worthy comes very quickly into the story. But... I'm not going to say too much else, but the characters is like the main thing that is very well done. The overall narrative is a little predictable as far as RPG storylines go, but the character and the world building and everything is really good in it. And the combat's super fun. Like I'm playing on the second highest difficulty and it takes a lot of legitimate thinking. There's like a speed lane, a normal lane, and a power lane. The power lane obviously does what you expect it to do where you take longer to act but you hit harder speed lane is you hit faster but take less time and then like there's all these little zones and weird shit that get put on the map too as far as where your turn is and everything so you're always constantly thinking about your enemy speed your speed the speed of the zones like and you can do actions that push your allies forward push them back push enemies forward push enemies back like there's just a whole constant little puzzle thing to the combat. Yeah. Although you can also play it on a lower difficulty and just spam auto attack and do completely <laughs> fine. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I appreciate turn-based RPGs finding ways to make the turn-based combat uh, more intricate and interesting. Uh, I think Shin Megami Tensei and Persona have always done a really great job of that. Last year's Star Renegades did a great job of that, and this sounds oh. kind of similar to that almost. Yeah, um, and then also like as far as combat goes, there's uh, there's at least two, but there's probably a few different build types you can do each character in like you generally want a healer a tank and an offense person but like ari you can build her as being either a spellcaster a healer or like crit based auto attacks and like the whole thing is her passive still will automatically heal some people whenever she builds it up and she can get like her auto attacks as she crits builds her passive and like so you could do a whole bunch of different things with the builds, and the Lowy has things where she summons these tentacles that beat the crap out of people, so you can get her to be more of a healer through that, because they heal as they do damage, and you can invest in that, or you can invest in her being offense. Like, every character has multiple build paths you can kind of take them through, and there's no, like, penalty to reinvest your points. That's good. So, like there's runes and like there's a bonus at three runes on one tree and then six runes at one tree and as soon as you get to the point where you have six runes that you can invest in one you could just pull out of both trees and then reinvest into just one tree and there's no penalty for that That's and cool. it's the same with the ability investments so it's good it's fun it's just I like it. I like League of Legends a lot, though. So, but I have seen a lot of people who don't play League. They play Final Fantasy. They've tried this and they liked it a crap ton. So, awesome. All right. Uh, yeah, I, it's on my to play list eventually, but uh, I'll probably wait for a sale. Um, Preston, number four. 
I want to say that while we were talking, I downloaded Arch Fail, so I'm going to keep <laughs> on that. Um, it's a good game. Good game. I like it. And, uh, but my number four is It Takes Two. Oh, yeah. <gasps> game is also on my list. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's yep. same. Mine as well. It is, it was, uh, my wife and I, we don't play games together. She'll watch me play Telltale style games, help me make choices, but she doesn't play video games. I convinced her to play It Takes Two, and we fought like crazy, argued like crazy, and were annoyed as hell with each other for the majority of that game in all the best ways. Um, in right. a way that, like, we progressed together even after we fought that stupid vacuum thing like 30 times to start. <laughs> and again, yeah. they do a good enough job of making it accessible for people that don't typically play video games mm -hmm. while still keeping a challenge and making the other person who does play games need to sort of like carry their weight and pull the difficulty. And it like, it almost is kind of like adding difficulty for you as the other player in a more rewarding sense uh, that can be really fun and challenging. Right. Um, there are frustrating parts, but it was more about the experience of going through that game with someone else and experiencing and, yeah. uh, the different levels and the, the creativity of the worlds that you end up in and the different mechanics that you go through. Like whenever you get to the Diablo style Top down, yeah, it was shift. It's super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's just so many, and that's just like one small two hour clip out of this 15 hour game or so, right? That it, it, they constantly change it up in a way that is exciting and fun and keeps everything moving, even if the story, just like Ratchet and Clank, like I said earlier, is very MacGuffin style, like, oh, you got to hit the next thing and the next thing and then the next thing. And it's not really, you don't feel like you're progressing the story as you're going through the story in any meaningful sense because there's always going to be that next thing that you're supposed to do and you have no yeah. idea what the mm -hmm. checklist actually looks like. But yeah. the gameplay itself is just so damn good and ingenuitive. The best MacGuffin in the game was the freaking elephant thing, though. Yeah, oh, that do was not, so good. Don't, don't, I'm not going to say anything no spoilers. else. I'm not no saying spoilers. anything else, but the elephant thing was the best freaking thing ever. It's, yeah, it's like, where the cool. heck is the game going? It was so yeah. good. Uh, I think by far the best game we have chosen to do Wasted. Like, all of the games, I think, have been super fun Wasted. But when Tyler and I played this and did It Takes Bruce, I think I had the most fun, like, just doing craziness. I mean, at the one point, we were giving each other a golden shower. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. It's true. I, uh, and it was like hilarious. It was sure. so much fun. Yeah, it's it's an unbelievably amazing game. Uh, and like you said, Preston, very accessible. Uh, I ended up playing it with my mom, who has never controlled a 3D camera before, but you get used wow. to it pretty quickly in that game. Uh, it's not too difficult. Some platforming sections are very hard to get used to, but mm -hmm. I, I think it's accessible enough. And like you said, it added a little extra difficulty on me, but I think that was fine. Like The amount of variety of gameplay in this game is unbelievable. Yes. Like. I've heard some complaints from people that like this game is too long. I don't I don't think so. I didn't feel that at all. 15 hours and it flew by cuz I only did a mechanic for like an hour, 2 hours right, maybe exactly. before I was doing something they else. They don't let any of the mechanics live out past when it's fun or whatever. Mm -hmm. The um well, I played with my girlfriend, but she's pretty good at games overall. Like she plays enough to be decent at it or whatever, but I was sitting there looking and I was like, why the fuck are the female parts like the more difficult platformer based parts when a lot of the people that are playing this are going to be a guy dragging their significant other into it and they're going to want to play as may so like it's not all of it obviously and there are aspects that are like but it felt like the guy character cody had like more simplified things to do than there was her. a weird imbalance sort of in the like the uh, like the precision that may needed for some yeah of her for a lot of the things like right which it does make sense but, because typically the girl characters are the like nimble like jump around do super precise shit and the guys are just like i'm here to fucking yeah hit. there's yeah. a part there's a part in the first area where you're like throwing as cody you're like throwing nails for platforms to move platforms yeah. around and then they're doing like a side scroll may's doing like a side scroll that took like two hours it was very hard yeah but uh 
but so I see what you're saying, but I I also felt like, you know, I had a lot of fun with everything I did as Cody and I you know, I could yeah. do another run as May just to try her yeah. stuff out too. Yeah. And I think yeah. I, and I know Tyler and I talked about that too, about playing and it another and thing and switching. But. Yeah. Another thing that I really liked is all the they didn't even need to put this shit in there, but all the stupid freaking mini games like there's chess just flat out. Oh, in they're here. so fun. There's like random yes. little shooting mini games and like whack-a-mole and like all sorts of stupid crap where you're versing each other. And it's just like that. You didn't need to put that in there, but you did. And then also as you're going through the world, there's so many like random little like interactable like you earn a trophy for doing it, but they don't tell you mm -hmm. how to do it. Like the the ice level is like gathering the seven little ducklings or four ducklings or whatever oh, yeah. to their mom or some shit like that. Like, and you don't even know it's a thing, but you're just like, I feel like this might interact with that, so I'm gonna go ahead and try that. And then suddenly you get a trophy for it, and you're like, well, that was cool. Yeah. Destroying the wooden toy town with the fucking yeah, ball. Yes. that was super fun. <laughs> And then also just like a random side note I have on here for it is um, it getting ga the game of the year for the game awards. A lot of people were arguing I... like, oh, I've never even heard of it, blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> it's like you look, there's articles about it selling three million copies. The thing is, three million copies means that six million people have played it because mm -hmm. it, you can play for free with just one person buying mm -hmm. it. And then like mm -hmm. as of a month and a half or whatever, it hit Game Pass. Which means even more people are fucking playing it at this point. There is no way in hell that it's not at least at like 6 million, if not 9 million, whatever amount of people playing it. There's no way this game doesn't have the hype to it to be the game of the year. Like, yeah, uh, just a we were, we were all had. very excited on the I that recording too. when it was game of the year because i was expecting it to just be death loop which honestly does not pull me in at all and i was just like yeah. oh it's gonna be another last of us too but thankfully <laughs> the rewards as a whole were very sporadically spaced out and like not all just death loop death loop death loop <laughs> but yeah that's all like it's yes. just a random side note i had here because i just found it funny how people couldn't do the basic math and research like one minute of research oh you can play for free with your friend a house co couch co-op you have to play it co-op so if it sells three million at least yeah. six million people are playing it well not exactly obviously because both of them could have bought it but it's close well, probably yeah not if you're mr marvel he <laughs> played that game solo i don't know if he ever finished but he attempted to play some of that game solo oh, yeah. at least it was Did very weird finish? i don't know i feel like i would try to attempt <laughs> something like that just because it was so very stupid. funny um but yeah like the, like the fact that everything in this game feels so good is uh, amazing like i mean there's some games that have one mechanic in it that mechanic's like eh, it was fine but oh, maybe a little jank and like the fact that this game it is ea published but it feels indie i don't think that team is owned by ea mm -hmm. it's like their indie publishing branch ea's indie publishing yeah. branch uh <laughs> yep. like the fact that everything in this game with as much gameplay variety as it has feels amazing it is like far and away the best 3d platformer of the year and it's not just the 3D mm -hmm. platform. It has so much more going on. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, one of my favorite games of the year. Um, it's pretty high up on my list. Uh, the only thing that detracts it from me is I hate the main characters. I think they both super fucking suck. And oh, they're I horrible just, parents. And I think I mean, it's not just the parenting. That's kind I of think the point, though. It's like at the beginning, you're meant to hate terrible. them. It's like yeah, as much a yeah, journey know, of never them reconnecting. Yeah, I never... You. I liked them, them enough by the end. Like, yeah, it felt I thought fine they were both super fucking annoying. And I hated the book. The book was like Antonio mm -hmm. Banderas, the love yep. book. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I, I just hated the writing in the game. I thought it was bad. Um, yeah, I do think the, the book game... specifically you're supposed to hate, but yeah, that doesn't change uh, the fact that he's a weird like racist it. stereotype also. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Isn't the uh, director, though, actually like, hispanic and stuff like isn't he allowed to do that i don't know i don't know how that works i mean still making um, the the book of love uh like a the sexy italian man i don't know it's still it's a, a very much a stereotype that they didn't break away from it anyway but um but the the gameplay i mean everybody said it is incredible and it's variety galore you know you never get tired of what you're doing because it's going to be changing up uh the next minute um, mm -hmm. and every scenario that you get put into is super fun, and every level is unique and different, and there is so much 
fun to explore throughout these little sandbox areas and it just it was constantly a fucking blast to play i just turned the volume down <laughs> you know luckily we had each other to talk to yes <laughs> there is i mean good... it's it's the best co-op game you I've say turn played. the volume yeah. down but there is good music in that game you brought a track turn, from that game turn, turn the uh voice acting down <laughs> it's, it's not good hey, okay dude. yeah uh all right uh tom you're number four my number four is narita boy which i know chris you didn't really you fell off yeah pretty well i, but I, this I is love like, the art though the art and the music are good yeah so the only thing i recommend not doing is if you are prone to seizures do not play this game there's a lot of flashing lights oh, yeah. fucking just going off randomly um as but, soon as you turn it off <laughs> yeah like the aesthetic the music it is very like flashback to 80s early 90s like it reminded me of another world on super nintendo flashback on genesis um like it's that cinematic kind of platformer um there the music is fantastic i had my number one modi music of the year was the fucking trichroma sunrise which if you listen to the whole song it's just a build-up of like fucking epic fantasticness um but no, it's it's a super fun game. I really enjoyed it. But then again, like this is my aesthetic. This weird like Tron mixture of fucking synth wave and craziness. The yeah. you get the sword, uh it can turn into a fucking shotgun, a laser beam, you ride this crazy motherfucking like horse deer thing for a while. Like it's just madness. And what I don't think it's on Game Pass. I think I bought it for twenty dollars. It is on so Game Pass. Tor- it is on Game Pass. Yes, that's where I played it. it. It's fun. Cool. That's all I need to tell you. Is it's fun, and if you like synthwave and vaporwave, like they had the nice little vaporwave screen in where it's just got the oh, yeah. VHS like signature and everything. It's just it's fantastic. And you find out about like you go into this realm and you have to help motherboard who is basically like what the spiritual leader of this place and you find these flashbacks of the creator who is a guy that like made this world and you go into these little different areas and you get a little more tidbit about his life and like what he went through and it, it's just really cool and like his childhood and stuff yep and it's very yep. cool the way that it just goes about it it's got some cool puzzles in it and yeah it's just a lot of fun awesome read a boy shit all right uh ryan you're number four all right my number four uh is a re-release for this year but i never played it originally the first time i came to this game was this year it is the absolute epitome in my mind in video games of uh, character study and world building this is disco elysium final cut uh i don't know if anyone else played this this year i did a whole spoilunker cast with the i i I played it i bought it and tried to play it but i don't have the time that's fair. Uh, there's a lot to sink your teeth into when in this actually game. own it on Steam and on fucking PlayStation now. Yeah. <laughs> this uh this may even be objectively a better game than other games I have ranked higher. Like if we were making a collective Spelunkers top ten list, I would fight for this game higher than a number four spot. I just had maybe more fun and a, a more round experience in other games than I did in mm-hmm. Disco Elysium. But there's no denying how much this game affected me, how much this game made me think in so many different facets about so many different things. It's extremely good. The world they place you in is the most fleshed out world I can think of from any piece of media. Um, Like the fact that I was able to have like a 10 minute conversation about this specific model of police car Mm. that I, that my partner drove into town just like tickled me pink. It was so good. Uh, I, there's not a lot to say without spoiling things. And this game is, absolutely one you want to experience for yourself the revelations to be had are numerous and well worth your time um and i think the full voice acting with the final cut Mm -hmm. really is just what you need with this game there's a lot of words but the voice acting is just the best voice acting it's so good it's it's extremely well done voice acting all the actors do a phenomenal job um is it better than my wildermeth voice acting (laughs) 
No way. It's a, impossible. On par. On par with. Uh, <laughs> High praise. Uh, and, and the writing is just so well done. It's. It, it, I have heard a lot about that game, but I have also... It goes to a note we've already mentioned a few times. I hear it exemplifies the issue that is the Switch and ports to the Switch. Uh-huh. I didn't play it on oh, Switch. Yeah. I played it on PC. So Same. I uh, okay. You're like I most people probably have. Yeah, but I, but on I heard people played it. I on would Switch. not even want to try this on Switch. Mm. No. I heard it's like okay, but it has a lot of weird laggy moments and like it's not the best optimized for. This yeah, Switch. I mean, also With... playing in handheld seems terrible because there's a lot of text. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, and a yeah. lot of fine detail to a world that isn't that has a wonderful art style, but doesn't necessarily lend itself to like defining fine detail within its art style. Right. Um. So yeah, I, I don't know that I want to play this handheld, but it's it's really good. I I God the, the characters. I care so much for these characters. Uh, I did a whole spoiler cast. We had Dory, Rob, and Skelly on. Uh, go listen to that if you want to hear my fullest thoughts. If you have played this game, because I don't want to talk too in-depth about what goes on in it here, knowing that several people have it and haven't gotten far or played it at all. Cool. Uh, all right, Tyler, so, number four. My number four has already been talked about. It's Guardians of the Galaxy. Yay. Awesome. My number four, Tales of Arise, also already been talked about. Yay. Okay. Number my three. number three, I don't know if anybody actually would put it on their list, but I... <laughs> Put a whole bunch of fucking hours into it, and it's uh, Pokemon Unite. I uh, I really, really like the game, and it's short and sweet MOBA fix, and I do play a crap ton of League of Legends, so it's just nice to have that. Um, it looks good, and they're constantly improving on it as far as the UI and trying to listen to the community and everything goes. Um, that being said, the main issues with it tend to be there's weird balancing things for each of the individual mons but that's pretty standard for fighting games and mobas and then um there's in-game mechanics that like they don't explain at all like i found out about one like a month or two ago where if you kill 30 points worth of rotoms and dreadnoughts you do 55 percent less damage to zapdos and zapdos actively can flip the game like in a second so it's like and also your respawn timer becomes super long based off of just the fact that you're killing a bunch of people not levels and stuff like normal so the game punishes you a little bit too much for winning but like besides that like i think the skins are super fun the events they've done have been pretty fun overall like it's just kind of addicting and super easy to just pick up play a game or two because they have five minute matches or ten minute matches and it's even on the phone now. So it's just like super quick, easy and like addicting to play. So, yeah. But, and also they don't specify some things enough. Like I'm sitting there playing Dragonite and he has like hyper beam or a, a move that turns him into auto attack based or whatever. And I'm like, does hyper beam scale with special attack or normal attack? I don't know. So I guess I'll just use all my items that are level 30 for auto attacks or AD or whatever. So there's just weird things because it's a company in China that makes it that don't get translated correctly. And it's also partially because Nintendo does that with their own patch notes. Like if anybody who plays competitive smash knows it's fucking annoying trying to decipher what got changed. They're just like, Oh yeah, we changed up air on Luigi. And you're like, what did you change? Like that doesn't tell me anything. And that's what they do with this game too. And most of their other games. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed uh, Pokemon Unite a lot for like two or three weeks, uh, and then I started getting really mad at what are probably five-year-olds that I was playing against, so I stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Chris hates five-year-olds. <laughs> it just I, I just it. play it just to play it, and ultimately there's no voice chat, and no voice chat and no text chat in a MOBA is like the greatest thing ever. Because <laughs> you can be an annoyed and mad yourself about the way people are playing and it's just stuck with you and then it just quickly <laughs> dissipates like there's nobody to further enrage you or anything so or you bottle it up and let it fester no <laughs> yeah <laughs> serenity now but i find it super fun i signed up 
I signed up like a, a month before it even came out for the Japanese beta test. I made a Japanese Nintendo account just to spam <laughs> the ever living fuck out of it. So I played it a whole bunch there and then I played it a whole bunch now and I have it on my phone to check my dailies and everything. So just super fun and addicting game overall. Awesome. All right, number three, Preston. Halo. Hello. Hey, hello. <laughs> uh, n- number three, Tom. Guardians of the Galaxy. Hell yeah, Ryan. Number three. Inscription. Okay. Is Here we go. Just, yeah. We're flying. We're Here flying. Here we go. What's up? usually boy. the point where yeah. it starts going <laughs> rather quickly. Tyler, number three. Uh, my number three is Tales of Arise. My number three is It Takes Two. Back to genetics, number two. <laughs> My number two is it takes two. <laughs> <laughs> Preston, number two. My number two, let's grind this bad boy to a halt. Uh, <laughs> it, is, uh, it is a very, very quick game, and I'll be very quick in my discussion because you can't really talk about it. Is, uh, it's called Before Your Eyes. Um, oh, yeah. oh, that's it the is, one where you blink, right? Yeah, yes. so yeah. You, you will be there for an hour and a half to two hours. It is a very short experience where... The gameplay, you are looking through the eyes of the main character as they progress uh, through the story. And the scenes happen. If you blink, it moves on to the next scene in certain sections. So you'll get like a timer that'll pop up saying, if you blink, it will progress. And the, of course, the hard part of this is there will be scenes where you want to hold on to this moment because it'll be a sweet moment or something beautiful and you're wanting to... St- stick with it and then you obviously can't you'll blink yeah. and you can't look away it really does a really good job of tracking your eyes and then there will be moments where you are kind of trying to rush through it because it is very difficult uh this is a very very heavy content warning uh that if you are easily affected by upsetting stories um uh, go make sure to check out the con- I don't want to say what the content is because that would spoil, spoil it majorly. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so it's it's hard to explain, but if you are upset by very upsetting stories, <laughs> it is ups- if you are not upset by the story, you're a fucking monster. Yeah. Um, so I watched my wife play it rather than playing it myself, and I was like next to her just bawling. Um, yes. And so it's uh it's good it's just so deeply unsettling and they use the mechanic of your uh your blinks progressing the story draws you into it in a way that is really effective obviously because your eyes are glued to the screen kind of thing yeah we should say technically you can play this if you don't have a webcam you can use your mouse but i don't recommend it because then you you don't get the experience of trying to hold your eyes open through a Mm -hmm. scene or whatever you're just sitting there and listening until you feel like clicking yeah and it's it will it just you gotta play it it's an hour and a half to two hours it's typically i think like i got it for 4.99 or something like that like it's not expensive it is totally worth going through it if you can handle very very heavy subjects yeah uh okay i was gonna say i like the way he's giving his warning better (laughs) Because, like, sometimes, like, we just finished watching, like, the third season of You or whatever, and they have an episode straight up where they're like, yeah. this episode has concepts of suicide. You're like, yeah, why spoilers. would you just tell me? Right. It's like, why would you tell me? Like, I get it, right? I get the need for the warning, but it's like... Go search out the a, warning if you... Yeah. It should be a setting yeah. on games that you can turn... Games and movies and stuff that you can turn on. Like, hey, I need warnings for this. Because whenever yeah. you get that warning, it's like... You just you ruined part of what is going to be a turn. So yeah, that would be I a like great like console wide setting uh, for mm-hmm. like content people warning, to like implement. Yeah, I think like the the only one that the the only one that doesn't matter obviously is like the epilepsy one should just be at the beginning of every video game. But yes. like warnings of suicide or bad relationships and all that stuff are just like. I don't need to be warned of this. You're just kind of spoiling parts of the game. Mm, that's the like, warning if you're going to play Chris Dales. <laughs> Dude, uh, whatchamacallit, <laughs> Boyfriend Dungeon? 
they warn you about you get texts from a mother figure is that gonna oh, bother yeah. you and then they also warn you about like bad relationships and stuff i'm like it's a dating game i'm pretty sure this is to be expected but okay yeah. that's fine yeah uh i also played before your eyes i really liked it i was bawling my eyes out by the end uncontrollably uh it's amazing mm -hmm. In that oh regard, I, I will say the main reason it did not make my top 10 is because I had a technical issues with it. Like, uh, it has a, it has a really? setting for if you're wearing glasses, it's supposed to still recognize your blinks, but it was just blinking through every scene, even when I wasn't blinking. So I ended up having huh. to take my glasses off to play it, uh, which I get uh, migraines sometimes in first person games, uh, motion sickness. And uh, without my glasses on, I got motion sick really fast, like 30 minutes in. Uh, I was laying down in bed for two hours because I had a massive migraine. Uh, so I ended up having to take Dramamine Jesus. to get through the rest of the game. <laughs> so for you, it was like a four-hour game with a two-hour break. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's something that we... I wonder, did you play it when it first came out? No, I just played um, it like two weeks ago. Oh, week really? Ago. Yeah, because we had just played it, yeah, this past month, and it was buttery smooth. Um, like, it, I was surprised how well it worked. I was really yeah. uh, impressed. You said your uh, wife yeah. played it, right? Yeah, she also and wears she has glasses. glasses. Okay, that's yeah. what I was going to Yeah, ask. honestly, it might be something with my lighting setup because, like, anybody who watches the video versions can see I have reflections yeah, all over can't my glasses. Yeah, you see your eyes really right yeah. now. Yeah, so hmm. could have been that. Yeah, yeah excellent just, game. Uh, Check it out. Be ready to cry. On Steam winter sale. Can't wait to try it myself. Nice. Yeah, I'll have to give it a shot at some point. Awesome. Uh, Is Tom right. asleep? <laughs> yeah, you can't tell. <laughs> He's just like... <laughs> with sunglasses it's like uh uh all right tom you're number two ratchet and clank hell awesome. yeah uh ryan you're number two wildermyth hell yeah yeah tyler number two it takes two uh my number two did you do that on purpose just because it was two <laughs> nope that's just where it landed. Just was was villager yeah. number eight too i don't remember uh, <laughs> actually was it it might have been <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. oh was metroid your number five no i'm just kidding um my number oh, two was not a good game wow damn uh <laughs> oh yeah i know where your number one is we have at least one docker left uh number two is uh resident evil village for me uh number genetics one. number one Number one for me is uh, Neo, The World Ends With You. Just obsessed yeah. with that series overall, so it's my number one. And I honestly, at first, when it first came out, just as a quick side note, I debated it versus uh, uh, Tales of Arise at first. It was, like, that high up originally. But then I soundtrack and, like, everything else to it, like, kicked Tales of Arise down, and then other games took over Tales of Arise because Neo The World Ends With You was such a full and complete RPG package for me that that kind of kicked it down even more, which <laughs> Tales of Arise being as good as it is, kicked Scarlet Nexus like all the way the fuck out of the list and probably down to like top 20, maybe top 25 at best or something. So this year's just been really good as far as RPG type Greater stuff goes. Purposes. Yeah, awesome. All right, you're number one, Preston. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm saying it here. I'm coining it. Uh, Gotag. Uh, is it? Got Gotag. Gotag. Galaxy. <laughs> Gotag. Uh, oh, Gotag. Gotag. Oh yeah, you can break them all. Like number he one. He said that earlier. He yeah. said that earlier. Gotag. Yeah. What? No. Galaxy. Oh, I said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Uh, Dom, number one. It takes two. Hell yeah. Ryan, number one. Screeching Halt, my number one. <laughs> Technically last year, but came out after we recorded <laughs> Goaty Talk. Oh, so technically it counts. Omori. It, yeah. Uh, the way I, I do I my rankings, I didn't bring that here, but it is number one in honorable mentions because it's one of my favorite games of all time now. It would have been number one if I considered it for this year. Same. I don't think another game in 2021 was as fun to play and left as much of an impact on me it, at the same time. Uh, the gameplay is great. It is a very, very good JRPG, just a classic turn-based RPG system. Uh, the characters are phenomenal, and the story that game sets out to tell is uh, beyond impactful. I think we all agree that it, 
near the end of that game, it left a pit in our stomach. Like we just, oh, it hits so hard. Um, and, and yeah, it's, but it's not without spoiling. So, <laughs> yeah, Lorelai is obsessed with it. Uh, she's done many paintings and digital art of characters. Yeah, she really liked it. Uh, so she was sorry that we it. couldn't be on. Yeah, we couldn't. She planned on playing through to do all of the endings. I don't know that she has yet, but I know that this yeah. is a great game for me. And for those who don't know, she is my 12 year old daughter. Yeah, uh, th it's coming to Switch ne next year. Thank goodness. Uh, hopefully people will play it and finally give it the conversations it deserves because I don't think it's got enough discussion in mainstream media. Uh, I see lots of people talking about it online, but yeah, I mean, I think it has a small, like, passionate cult following, but uh, yeah, definitely, yeah. like, um, among mainstream media, I think they barely touched it at all. It is, like, the the things it has to say about depression and the twist it has in the story, uh, combined with, like, this really, like, whimsical, bizarre, earthbound kind of uh, world that you're also in at the same time, it's... It's cr a crazy game. Crazy, amazing game. That's very hard to talk about. We talked about it for many, many hours on a game exploration that you can listen to. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, please play that uh, when it comes to Switch or on PC right now. It's just just play it. It's so good. Yeah, if I had to guess, it will probably come to the other consoles at the same time, because I don't think they said timed exclusive or anything when they announced that. Nintendo just obviously when they announce something, they don't say also it's coming to PlayStation and Xbox. I mean... I'm half expecting there's a po plausibility that obviously Nintendo would want to announce themselves, but I get the feeling that Microsoft is making contracts with people behind the scenes to have ghost surprise Game Pass launches. So, yeah. like, there's been a lot of games that I'm like, what the fuck? When did this get on here? And it got on there today, <laughs> and I'm downloading and playing it that day because it's just like, well, I guess I gotta try it now. Like, there's something about it being a ghost launch rather than that and then ahead of time, like, oh, this is going to come to Game Pass at this time. You're like, okay, noted. I'll have to check that out. Like, when it drops as a ghost drop, for some reason, the game makes you want to play it more. Like, Apex <laughs> Legends, when they just ghost drop that shit on everybody, it was like, I have to play this. I don't play Battle Royales very much, but I have to play this right now. Like, it's like the pure encapsulation of FOMO. So if yeah. your theory about it coming to other consoles is correct, I think that could be a reason why it hasn't been talked about for another console yeah. potentially. I, I mean if it comes to game pass day one even more i'll be screaming at people you have no excuse to not play not this for the long time right yep. yeah yeah uh all right tyler grind us to a halt one last time with your number one uh my number one is uh fist or forged in shadow torch it no 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 hold on for you to bring that up the <laughs> name is fist forged in T shadow torch it's not or I know. I know. <laughs> it's a terrible name but it on. is the worst name um i hate the name to death and it really doesn't make any sense i mean i get it because you have a giant fist as a weapon <laughs> but... yeah it's just it's terrible um and it does the game a disservice by having such a poor name um the game is one of the most fun games i have played in a very long time um is a metroidvania where you are playing as an anthropomorphic rabbit named rayton and uh you're in this very unique world that is like kind of 1930s 40s era uh with like hints of like chinese aesthetics and neon um like under belly london cities with fucking mechs and like steam powered like giant uh like factories and stuff it's just it's an amalgamation of like all these different styles coming together to make this really cool game that feels amazing to play i think the platforming is incredible um uh, the combat is even better uh it's the thing about metroid dread that i don't like uh there, it, it takes the place of the thing in Metroid Dread that I don't like, which is the combat feels very stale in that game, where this feels almost like a um, a like 2D fighter in a way, because you can string all these combos together and create like a very unique play style, um, because you have like three different attachments for your arm. You have an, like a regular fist, you have like a propeller, and then uh, another thing that you get later on that is very cool that I used until the end of the game. Um, I don't want to say what it is, but 
uh, you get all these different upgrades. It's very Metroidvania, um, going back and forth, trying to find different things, the hidden objects as you get new weapons and upgrades. Um, and the story is interesting enough that it keeps you going. Um, it just, uh, I, I don't really know how to describe it. It's just such a unique game that I just, I didn't expect to enjoy as much as I did. Like, it's one of those games where I, I was playing it, I beat it. I was like, ah, well, I'm a couple of trophies away from the Platinum. I'll, I'll, I'll try to get the Platinum. And I played for another few hours and then another few hours. And I just kept playing and playing and playing because it was like I was just obsessed with tra traversing that world and doing the combat and stuff. It just uh, is great. It's a really good time. Cool. Does it have a parry? It what? Does it have a parry? It does have a parry. Okay, good. It is a... Um, it's an unlock, and it's it's really weird because like, you find these things, and you can miss them, I'm pretty sure, um, that kind of change up. Like, you have a drone that you can get at some point. Um, there is a parry. There is, like, health flasks that you can use as well. Um, and you are slowly accruing, like, coins to unlock... Uh, different abilities and combos and stuff like that and the way that you can extend some of these combos like within the combat is fucking ridiculous there is a trophy for doing the training and you have to do like expert level training and finish it off and the combo string that you have to put together is like across the screen to finish it and you're constantly switching back and forth between uh, different forms of your fist and like how you have to Use the combos and stuff, and it gets so intense and crazy. It and sounds like, kind of like a Devil May Cry Five sort of shit. Yeah, and and that's what you're doing. And then like you start to memorize some of these combos, and you take it into combat, and you're just like wiping the floor with people. And um, it just it's a like, really great time, great game. Yeah, because I had a great uh, time. There's still people that I watch on YouTube who post Devil May Cry Five combo videos, and they're still coming up with more combos to post, like to this day, pretty much, just because it's such an in-depth system. So that sounds a lot like that as far as the stance switching and stuff goes to some extent. So I'll probably have to. Yeah, check that's a it out that's a lot point. of what it is is like stance switching, and uh, you know, it has one of the best underwater areas I've ever played in a game. It was a like. <laughs> And that was uh, that was one of the turning points for me where I was doing an underwater level and I was like, I don't fucking hate this. <laughs> right. A lot of times underwater levels just are like, why? Yeah. Why and, uh, I don't I, talk I enjoyed about it. Monster like Hunter it was a very cool break. setting and the traversal was great. And uh man, I I don't know. It's just one of those games that like really hit me. I fucking stuck with me. So. Okay. Um oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying it's really good to know that uh, like a, a good Metro Divania came out this year, you know? Like it, yes. I should check I it know. out. And, and no, what's even worse about it though is like nobody really talks about it because there's some other yeah. one that's like not that great that people somehow like. <laughs> Terrible underwater care. levels. Terrible yeah. underwater levels. What? <laughs> Metro Dread has a great underwater level. The map uh, is terrible. Oh my god, you're trash. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, uh, potentially spoilers for Fist. Do you ever take your big fist and uh, fist the pig's asshole like Bloodborne? Because, I mean, that's uh, good material. You do not. No, there's actually no fisting going on in that game. Uh, but the story is actually really cool and like the enemies that you fight are very cool and they change up a lot like at one point you're fighting like these crazy fucking ninja frogs and <laughs> they come out of nowhere but like they add a really unique um combat uh, variety that i wasn't expecting and then it just constantly changes as like new enemy types are introduced like you're just changing up how you play it's uh great keeps you on your toes i cannot overstate how good traversal is in that game it just feels great to move around Cool. Awesome. All right. Uh, my number one is Neo. The world ends with you as well. Uh, staggering game. Blew me away. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> and then do you have other lists or are we doing honorable mentions? Uh, we will do honorable mentions, but don't like talk in depth about your honorable mentions because we oh, are I'm almost at four to. hours. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm just. Uh, so who do I say? Yeah, mine go, go ahead. Genetic. Yeah. Well, I have games that I played that almost made it um monster hunter stories to loop hero nickelodeon all-stars brawl pokemon snap and then near reincarnation i think is the one mm. that came out this year that replicant the whole number oh, replicant uh, reincarnation is the phone game i meant replicant yeah, replicant. um yeah the, but that i also sort of didn't count because it's like a remake yeah sort mm -hmm. of thing. it's a weird thing i don't know whatever 
And then I have mentions that I didn't play due to money systems or time needed, but I feel like they had a chance. They would have had a chance, which is a Psychonauts two due to time, Guardians of the Galaxy due to money, Shimagami Tensei is money, Kenna money, Returnal systems, uh, Persona mm-hmm. Five Strikers was this year, right? Yes. Yes. In okay. February. Yeah. It was. Wow. Yeah. Money. Guilty Gear Strive. Money. Death Store. Money. <laughs> Samurai <laughs> Warriors Five. Money. So. Yeah, it sucks to be broke, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's why we all subscribe to Game Pass. It's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, real quick, Ryan, you didn't have Loop here on your list. Just barely didn't make That's it. If, if I was a little crazy. more strict with the list, uh, Omori wouldn't have been on there, and Loop Hero would have been. Okay. Uh, Preston, you have any honorable mentions you want to shout out? Do uh, so in order: Life is Strange, True Colors, Returnal, Moonglow Bay. Oh, Moonglow Bay was cool. Uh, Knockout City, Fallheim, Fallen Order Series X update. I'm gonna, uh, I'll allow it. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, Pathfinder: Wrath of the Righteous would have, if I put any more time into it, it would have been easily in my top five. I just I've I've only seen like the first tenth of that hundred hour game, you know, so right. I can't really make a call on it. But I know it's going to be fucking fantastic. <laughs> cool. Uh, Tom, you got any honorable mentions? Uh, Scarlet Nexus was close. I really enjoyed that game. Uh, Garden Story almost made it. Cool. That much. Um. Like I, I had mentioned Scarlet Nexus 2, it got kind of pushed out by some other things, but the combat in it is really good. He's yeah, nine. if you play that, pick the lady character, though, apparently. Yeah, pick the lady character, because the guy's story is very... I hated butchered. the guy that came like, story, because I played the guy. I played the female, and the story felt fine to me, so... All right. Yeah, Yis was the other one. Yeah, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, uh yeah. East Nine was fun. Uh, great music. We we talked a lot about the music last week. You should listen to that podcast if you haven't. Uh, Ryan, honorable mentions. Uh, yeah, East Nine also saw my honorable mentions. I know there were a lot of great RPGs. I didn't play a lot of the best ones, so that one's was uh, high on my list. Voice of Cards, probably the most quality of life I've played in turn based RPG in a long ass time. Uh, Back for Blood. I can't believe this is the first we've Ooh. talked about game uh super fun just i mean it's left for dead so it didn't do enough different to really crack the top 10 for me but damn it is a very good time uh like loop hero of course my problem my biggest problem with loop hero is i put a shitload of time into that game and did not get far at all it has a very addictive loop but i couldn't quite click as hard with as it was some people uh and very late contender for me just found out about this it's been in uh, early access for a long time but it did release this year Pulsar Lost Colony. Uh, if you've ever wondered what it's what it would be like to run a Star Trek ship with four of your friends, uh, Pulsar. Hmm. Interesting. Cool. Uh, Tyler, honorable mentions. Uh, I just have East Nine and Outriders because I feel like I had a good time playing Outriders co-op. Yeah. Actually, and, also uh, uh, Ghost of Tsushima. There. Oh, yeah, the yeah. DLC for that. And Ghost of Tsushima Iki Island expansion was also pretty great. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. I mean, technically, I would throw like Final Fantasy and Endwalker in there, but <laughs> I haven't actually hit Endwalker yet. But the fact that I bought the game and I'm playing so much, I'm like, I'm going to like it by the time I'm at Endwalker. There's no fucking way I don't. Yeah. <laughs> also, Hitman. Yep. Uh, Hitman's on my honorable mentions for games I just didn't have time for. Uh, let me run through mine real quick. I've got a ton, but I'll go fast. Uh, Bowser's Fury, specifically Bowser's Fury, uh, is very cool. Open World Mario. Knockout City, Guardians of the Galaxy, Unpacking, Little Nightmares 2, Rogue Heroes. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's true. I forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> Little Nightmares 2 is good, yeah. Uh, Dodgeball Academia, Axiom Verge 2. Oh, good. Fuck. Uh, Will- <laughs> Wildermyth. Toem, Unsighted, Before Your Eyes, Oliha, Chicory. I'm surprised none of us had Chicory. Uh, Uh, Very cool story in that game, but I didn't love the gameplay. Uh, Dark Deity, Darkest Dungeon 2, which is only in Early Access, is the main reason it's just in Honorable Mentions. Uh, And then Omori, we talked about I didn't put on the list, uh, because it technically came out last year, the way I organized my list. Uh, And then ones that I just didn't have time for, 
uh, Hitman 3, Persona 5 Strikers, Disco Elysium Final Cut, Monster Hunter Stories 2, Arks Must Die 3, Tormented Souls, which is like a Resident Evil kind of like, like early Resident Evil style game that came out this year that looks really cool. Uh, Lost Judgment, Gloomhaven, got a like digital version this year, the board game, uh, which seems really cool. SMT5, Ender Lilies, Sky Children of the Light, Grime, Fist, Moonglow Bay, Demon Turf, and uh, Ruined King, A League of Legends Story. Uh, I, I've got a dishonorable mentions list, but I just won't read it because that somebody's favorite game is in here, I'm sure. <laughs> so I won't bother saying them. Yeah. First tale song. Like, um, that's it. <laughs> Ryan's favorite game. <laughs> um, but also just a quick cap off note on my part or whatever, uh, just as far as people's perceptions of the year for gaming, this perception people have that it's been a dry year to me is like a load of fucking bullshit. I had a way harder time coming up with a list here. And I mm. last year I had money for all the games I wanted. This year I did not have money for all the fucking games i wanted you know like i think it's a load of crap and him uh tyler even freaking out about oh shit little nightmares oh shit i forgot dodgeball academy like there was a lot going on this year and i think it's ludicrous that people thought it's a dry year like also greek i forgot to mention greek greek is also a good game yeah totally agree uh yeah it's a great year for indies rpgs it, you know, it wasn't a great year for the blockbuster shooters, but even then, we still got some really great ones. Like, right. So I, I don't know where that's coming from. I don't know where it's coming from either. I think it's just people that are like, it's probably just all the Sony heads, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is maybe the first year that I have not had like a first party Sony game on my top ten list. So yeah. maybe that's right. It. So it's probably. I think most of my list was um, indie games. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. yeah, I, I agree. Amazing year in games. I think last year was also pretty great in games, but uh, this year was superb. And next year looks also amazing. Um, games are good. Games are good, turns out. Uh, shocking. Shocking revelation here on the podcast. All right, let's uh, let's find something to talk about for four more hours because this podcast isn't long enough yet. No, uh, let's do uh, some plugs. Victorian Genetics, you have anything to plug? Uh, not really, just the usual stuff. That I haven't put content out yet, but I... Just got a new PC. Or <laughs> what is happening to your face, Preston? So eventually, I'll probably start putting something out. I just need to find the time and everything to want to do it. But it's just Victorian genetics on everything. Cool. Uh, Preston, you got anything you want to plug? I'm part of a little podcast called Level Zero, where we talk about the history of games or interview uh, the developers of the games we love with Greg Griffith as my co-host. Uh, we are going to be coming back in early 2022. Yeah, that's the next year. Uh, with History of Halo uh, Combat Evolved, the first game specifically with an interview from someone from Bungie. Um, and so that's really exciting. Super wow. pumped for that. Well, and cool. we should be getting some in detail. Uh, the streaming show where I interview developers of indie games should be coming back with some really strong names as well. Uh, probably in January as well. I don't have anything set in stone, but we have people that have agreed to be on the show. We just haven't fully set the schedule. Awesome. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Greg Griffith, who did our outro music that we still use. Yeah. 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 Uh, Tom, anything you want to plug? Tyler's prom night. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> don't take a shot every time he mentions prom night. <laughs> yeah, don't play that drinking game. Uh, Ryan, you got anything you want to play? Uh, check out the Splunker Switch channel, twitch.tv slash Splunkers. We got a lot of streams, a lot of nights of the week. Uh, Pokemon on Tuesdays, Resident Evil on Wednesdays. We recently finished Resident Evil 6. It was a very good time. I, I may say the best Resident Evil game. Call me crazy. Uh, crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> to be fair, I've only it's played fantastic. five, six. Uh, so uh yeah uh last call well not last call wasted typically on saturdays although that's going to be on hiatus for a little while but that's always a fun time and uh usually something co-op on sundays maybe i'll wrangle chris in for some more origami soon maybe uh tyler what do you want to plug uh just uh stay tuned to spelunkers youtube and podcast channel uh, i'm gonna be taking uh, some time off here next week i will be out for uh, at least a month um so you know, just stay tuned for whatever Chris, Ryan, and Tom cook up because it's going to be good stuff in, uh, until I get back. 
yeah, uh, I'll, I guess I'll plug our show that will still be going on. Uh, I guess starting like midway through January next year, uh, gotta rank them all. We'll probably put the game exploration show on hold until uh, Tyler's ready to record again. And, and I know Tom's schedule is crazy, but hopefully we can get him back on for some more episodes. Uh, but yeah, gotta rank them all. We'll be coming back in like mid January is when the first episode will probably release. Uh, where we rank every Pokemon ever. We're at like 700 now or something. It's absurd and impossible, but a lot of fun to just talk about these Pokemon, how shitty or great they are. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it for the podcast. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, it was a great time and it was only four hours long. So, you know, perfectly reasonable podcast length. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally. <laughs> Let's be up in five hours to go back to work. Nice. Oh, same. Tomorrow. I actually have to be up in tomorrow. four hours. <laughs> nice. But don't worry. I only work four days and have. That's why he's trying time. to get us the podcast for another four hours because yeah, you just, might as well just stay. I'll up. Just get ready for work. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.